Here in Orlando, Florida, it's the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship from the Orange County Convention Center. Thousands of the best dogs and their handlers and their fans all here in attendance waiting to see who will be crowned a national champion. Hi there, Jason Abb here. Glad to have you with us. So pleased that you'll join us tonight for the action from Orlando. Also glad to have Gina DiNardo of the American Kennel Club with us. And Gina, anybody can show up to this event and bring their dog and have the chance to be crowned a national champion. We've seen that this year with the quantity and the quality of dogs in the competition. That's right. This national championship is the largest national championship ever. Over 4,100 dogs will compete from all over the country. We have 179 different breeds competing for the title of national champion. Well, with all those dogs and all that action, we're going to have oodles of hours for you. Plenty of coverage tonight online. More of it coming up tomorrow night as we tap the evening to find out who is the best in show. But Gina, give us some specifics on what we're going to see tonight. So we're going to see four groups tonight. First, the toy group, then the hound group, followed by the non-sporting group and the sporting group. But we're also going to have a lot of other fun new competitions. We have Best Junior Handler. We also have the Yukonuba Breeder Stakes and the National Owner Handled Series Final. Uh, plenty to look forward to on the schedule for us tonight. Well, Gina and I will be in the booth overseeing some of the action. But for more on the proceedings all around the area here at the Orange County Convention Center, let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Lindsay McCormick. Lindsay, good evening. Hey, guys. What a day it's been here at the AKC You Can Do of a National Championship. I'll be behind the scenes bringing you some of the coolest stories from America's top show dogs. And you guys won't be the only two having all the fun. So back to you guys. Lindsay, thank you very much. We'll be checking in with you as the night progresses here in Orlando. But we are ready to start the show. And Gina, give us some of your top dogs to look forward to here in this competition. Well, we have 17 of the top 20 dogs in the country here this year. And here's the Shih Tzu. He is the number three toy dog in the country. That's Rocket. We have the Bloodhound Nathan, who is the number one hound dog in the country right now. And we have a German short hair pointer who's an up and coming young dog, only two years old, but one that's breed here today. And we'll see it later in the sporting group. So certainly some dogs to keep an eye on as the night goes on, but we are ready to begin this evening here. The toy group up first. Jeff Michaels handling our public address announcing. Let's catch up with him to start the night. It's time for the toy group. Please welcome from Wilton, Connecticut, Judge Dr. Margaret A. Reed. Our steward for the toy group this evening is AKC Executive Secretary, Mr. James P. Crowley. May we have the toy group, please? So we have 23 dogs in the toy group. They represent dogs from all different parts of the world, but the thing that's most in common about them is that they're bred purely to be companions. Toys usually equal fun, so can we nominate this group as the fun bunch at Absolutely. least to start? Absolutely, they're gonna have fun for sure. At the pro progression and procession begins, this is, yeah, this is a good time for the judge to get that once first look, see all the dogs that she's going to have an opportunity to examine a little bit closer, and uh, maybe one will catch her eye right away. Here's a look at some of the characteristics of the dogs in this group. As you mentioned, they make great apartment dogs, city dwellers, lap warmers, and certainly they are one of the featured groups and breeds. 
Absolutely. They make great companion dogs. They're usually fun-loving, easy to train. Some of them are easy to groom. Others are not. We have the toy poodle. Here's the miniature pincher. And she's going to look down the entire line, get up close and look at their heads, get an idea of who's in the ring. And it's interesting. She'll have her opportunity, of course, to look at each dog individually. But first impressions in life mean a lot. How big are these first impressions? You definitely can make an initial impression right away. And if that is sticks in the judge's eye, you know, you may start off the night with a little bit of an edge. So Dr. Margaret A. Reed giving everybody a look-see. And now we'll begin with the Pug Rufus. Pug. Pugs, one of the oldest of all breeds, have flourished from before 400 BC and have remained true to their breed through the ages. Congratulations in the early 18th on your win century, today. marmoset monkeys were popular Thanks. pets in Europe and were known as pugs, which was then slang for dear ones. The monkeys were thought to resemble the little dogs who soon became known Stop as that. pug dogs. The name stuck. This is pug number nine. And as we mentioned before, this is Rufus. And Gina, this is it. This is a great dog, a champion dog, and retiring after this competition. Yep, he's a number eight toy dog in the country right now. He's a national specialty winner. And his owner tells us that no matter what, Thank he's going to retire tonight. Pugs are the largest of the toy breeds. They range from about 14 to 18 pounds, and they're very playful and outgoing. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Named after the 17th century knights who rode on horseback and were loyal to King Charles I and II, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel was only owned by families of the court. Gay, friendly, and non-aggressive, the Cavalier never exhibits any tendency towards nervousness or shyness. This is Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, number 20. And this Cav goes by the name of Money Penny. Yeah, this is a really sweet and gentle breed. Uh, their expression and their eyes are really important in judging the breed. It's a called a head breed. Uh, it's very fun, energetic. Uh, they're very popular in the cities as well. Michelle Jones, the handler. Shih Tzu, one of the elegant and aristocratic right, breeds from China. Shih Tzu were cherished by royals there for over a thousand years. They are believed to have descended from crossing the Lhasa Apso, or Tibetan mountain dog, with the Pekingese a breed whose sole purpose is that of a house pet. The Shih Tzu is outgoing, friendly, and trusting towards all. This is Shih Tzu number five. And this is Rocket, and this is one of the dogs, Gina, you told us to keep our eyes on. Well, this is the number one Shih Tzu all systems, the number three toy dog in the country. He has won 16 all breed best in shows, 80 group first, best of breed at Westminster. And he's being shown by one of his owners, uh, Luke Eric. Does reputation help you when you come into a competition like this? Well, amongst the other competitors, yes. Oh, Italian Greyhound. Smallest of the family of gaze hounds, the Italian Greyhound is believed to have originated Thank more than 2,000 years ago in the region that is known now as Greece and Turkey. It was during the Renaissance that these miniature greyhounds were adopted by the Italian noblemen and became known by their present name. The IG is a sporty little dog and is a peaceful, gentle friend that likes attention. This is Italian greyhound number 11. He looks sporty, doesn't he? Especially when he has the name of Flash. Well, they are the smallest of the sighthounds, but they are like a hound, so they're going to be very active you, and athletic. 
They're extremely loving. If you have this breed, it's really important to socialize them when they're young so they don't get timid. Yeah. Favorite thing to do on for this dog is walking on the beach. Yeah, from Ocean City, Maryland. How are you tonight? Happy on. Often depicted in rare oil paintings and tapestries, the Papillon began in Spain as a drop-eared miniature spaniel. By the time they reached France, their ears were upright, almost wing-like, and they became known as the Papillon, meaning butterfly in French. Small, friendly, and lively, they are perfect pets for city and country dwellers alike. This is Papillon number 33. There's a great look at that butterfly baby. Goes by the name of Jackson. Jackson is one of the top 20 dogs all breed this year in the country. Uh, he is a 26-time all breed best in show winner. Most specialty wins in the history of the breed. Thank you. Right around to the end. See the instructions. See the watchful eyes of the judge following that dog every step. Chinese Crested. Although the exact origin of the Chinese Crested is unknown, it is believed to have evolved from African hairless dogs, then reduced in size by the Chinese. Cresteds come in two varieties. You, the hairless Patrick. is not totally so. They have tufts of hair on their head, tail, and feet. Powder puffs are completely covered with hair. Both varieties are loving animals, alert and curious with plenty of energy. This is Chinese Crested, number 26. And this dog has a trio of best in shows to its credit. 25 group first. She says too right many best of breeds to remember, so that's a pretty good thing. Holly getting a little workout on display here in Orlando. Toy Poodle. How are you tonight? There are three varieties of poodles. Standard, miniature, and toy. They are like in every way except for size. All poodles originated from the standard poodle, bred in Germany to retrieve ducks from the water. In German, poodle means water, active Thanks. and intelligent. The toys were created especially to be companions. This is toy poodle number six. Well, the haircut there, certainly for show, but also for purpose, too. <laughs> yes, so these dogs are retrieving dogs, even though they're very stylized now, and all of that hair is supposed to keep the joints and the organs of the dog warm when they're in the cold water. Right around to the end, please. Much more stylized for a dog show, of course, because we also like the glamour at the dog shows. So Rosie sporting that look for function and for fashion, too. Absolutely. Miniature Pincher. Miniature Pinchers have existed for several centuries in their native land of Germany. The breed's most distinctive tonight? feature is their hackney-like gait, similar to the high-stepping movement of a hackney pony. Although the two breeds resemble one another, Minpins are not miniature Doberman Pinchers. Fearless and spirited, they are happiest when treated like a standard-sized dog. This is Miniature Pincher number 15. <laughs> That min pin, he wants to bolt, he wants to get going, he wants to show his energy, look at those moves. There's that traditional correct hackney gait you see where he's high stepping in the front. This is a very accomplished miniature pincher. We saw him here last year. Thank you, take him right around please. So a little extra peek there from the judge. Well, she wanted to s look probably at his eye set or some aspect of his head. You have to bend down, get a little closer. And Blaze will now wait with the rest of the competition. Hi, how are you? Often Pinsir. Often Pinsirs originated in Central Europe, probably in the 1600s. They were one of several types of small terriers that moved from the barn where they served as ratters to the house where they became a beloved pet. Fun-loving and intelligent. Place. The name Affenpinscher means monkey terrier in German. This is Affenpinscher number nine. And look at that monkey face there. This is very sturdy, alert dog. Um, nice, cute little shaggy coat about them. 
Uh, this actual Affin Pincher is the son of the very famous Banana Joe Affin Pincher that won Best in Show at Westminster. Ben is Thank currently the number one Affin Pincher in the country. And his favorite toy and treat, some banana-shaped bait. <laughs> ben enjoying. Where do you find banana-shaped bait? I uh, need to know. I need to ask that question. Ben's got it and must love it. Toy Manchester Terrier. How are you tonight? The Toy Manchester Terrier Good, is a clearly you. descendant from the original English black and tan terrier, bred by coal miners in Manchester, England, for rat killing and rabbit chasing, two popular sports of the day. Eventually, a specific back, toy please. variety was established. Except for size and ear options, there are no differences between the two varieties. This is Toy Manchester Terrier number 42. You heard of rookie phenoms mm -hmm. and youngsters doing good things? Yeah. That's what this one's doing. Yeah, she's a baby. She's only 14 months of age. Already has won 10 group first, two all breed best in shows. This is a wonderful little breed that not a lot of people know about. Very sturdy, very energetic. I happen to have one, so I can vouch <laughs> for their cuteness. Thank you, Dan and Dan. Little smile and chuckle there from. Dr. Reed. Oh, it's so much fun to be out there and see all these beautiful dogs. I'm glad she's enjoying herself. Yorkshire Terrier. In 19th century How Yorkshire, England, the Good. breed caught rats for workers in clothing mills. The Yorkshire Terrier's coat was so beautiful that people said the mill workers must have spun their coats in the factories. Later in the same century, Yorkies were discovered by high society and they became the widely fine. loved family Down companion they are today. This is Yorkshire Terrier number eight. Who doesn't love a Yorkie? Oh, they're very popular. They're in the top 10 of uh, most popular breeds ranked by the American Kennel Club. They are famous for this beautiful coat that has long metallic steel blue coloring and then this other gorgeous tan color. This dog goes by the name Vixen. All treats Thanks are Vixen's favorite. She is an equal opportunity eater. Gotta love it. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> a true Vixen <laughs> when it comes to feed time. Silky Terrier. Developed around the turn of the century in Australia, the tonight? Silky is a true toy Good. terrier. Good, thank you. His coat is silky in texture and parted down the middle of the back. He is always blue and tan, smart, quick, moving fast and fast thinking. The Silky has an inquisitive nature and a zest for life. This is Silky Thanks, Terrier number 20. Now the Silky Terrier Winnie. Well, certainly it's a difficult proposition here for any judge. Dr. Reed's got her work cut out with all these great dogs. What's she looking for specifically? So each dog has a written breed standard that lays out the ideal type of what the dog should look like, the temperament, the coat, structure. And the judge is comparing that written standard right to the dog the that she's looking at in the ring. The, most, the dog that most closely resembles its standard theoretically is the dog that will win the group. Maltese. The Maltese has Good, been an aristocrat you. of the canine world for more than 28 centuries. The fact that through the ages they have been the household pets of people and culture, wealth, and fastidious taste may account for the refinement, fidelity, and cleanliness throughout their Down recorded back, history. Please. The breed has remained healthy and spirited despite their size. This is Maltese number five. Breeds known for its silky white hair big, round, beautiful black eyes. This is another young dog, just turned 15 months of age, was champion by the time he was 11 months old. A few young dogs here in the ring starting their careers at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. That is a vision right in white. Again. Buddy, loving all kinds of squeaky toys, looking to make some noise here in Orlando at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Havanese. Congratulations on your win. The Havanese is an old breed of the Bichon family, 
possibly originating on the island of Malta. The Havanese traveled through Spain and Italy before finding a permanent home in Cuba, where they became popular among the wealthy. Havanese are happy, friendly Thanks, dogs. Down and back, please. Their outgoing temperament and trainability make them a wonderful family pet and excellent candidates for obedience training. This is Havanese number five. And again, the stout competition in this toy group continues. This is another dog, Max, with multiple group wins. Shown tonight by handler David Murray. This breed is becoming very popular. It has a non-shedding coat, which lots of people love for allergy reasons. And uh, this is right one of those one breeds place. to consider if that's a criteria in your list of what makes a perfect dog for you. Great opportunity for fans at home watching to go through the proceedings tonight and tomorrow night and maybe find a future friend to bring home. How are you tonight? I'm wonderful. How are you Brussels today? Griffon. Fine, thank you. As their name suggests, Brussels Griffons were developed in Belgium, where they were most often kept in stables as ratters. Gradually becoming regular members of the household, thank old you. folk back, songs please. and tales mention bearded dogs in reference to the spunky Griffon. Probably best known for their almost human-like expression, the breed comes in two varieties of coat, rough and smooth. This is Brussels Griffon, number 25. So we've been talking about a lot of young dogs showing themselves here. This is a veteran making the rounds. Right, this is Johnny. So this year for the very first time at the national championship, we have a Thank class right for veterans, which is for dogs that are seven years of age or older. And uh, this is our first look at a veteran who's taken on the youngsters. Chalk one up for the old guys, like English Johnny. Toy Spaniel. How are you tonight? Just how long Toy Good. Spaniels had been known in Europe before they arrived in England remains unclear. Yet most authorities agree that the breed goes back to Japan and possibly ancient China. English Toy Spaniels are divided into four color back, varieties. Please. In this class are the King Charles, which is black and tan, and the Ruby, which is red. This is King Charles and Ruby English Toy Spaniel, number nine. So this is Quill and being shown by owner she Shelly Harper. She says that she's been showing since she was eight Thank years old much. when her mother shoved her in the ring because her mom had stage fright. <laughs> Shelly and Quill, uh, they're center stage right now, one of the biggest showcases here in Orlando. Best. Good evening. Thank you. English Toy Spaniel, Blenheim, and Prince Charles. Except in the area of color, all four varieties Thank of the English back, Toy please. Spaniel share one standard and a uncommon ancestry, or originally used in England for woodchuck hunting. Today's Toy Spaniel is a bright and interesting little dog, affectionate and willing to please. In this class are Blenheim, which is white and red, and Prince Charles, which is white with black and tan markings. This is Blenheim and Prince Charles English Toy Spaniel, number seven. The English Toy Spaniel, that expressive face and those right eyes, they place. just reel you in. It is a breed that is supposed to have a large head and large eyes. And as we heard, this is the Prince Charles version, which just refers to the coat color. Congratulations on your win. Toy Fox Terrier, a genuine American breed Toy Fox Terriers are truly a toy and a terrier Down in back, both please. character and personality. Breed traits to be observed are keen intelligence, courage, and animation, all in a diminutive package. They are well-balanced toy dogs of athletic appearance, displaying grace and agility, as well as strength and stamina. This is Toy Fox Terrier number nine. Great classic look for Oliver here, right to Toy Fox place. Terrier. This Mo is the top winning Toy Fox Terrier of all time. I'm very impressed. It's a new breed, only registered with AKC since 2003. Japanese Chin. How are you In tonight? Japan, there are Inu, Just meaning fine, dogs, you. and there are Chin, meaning royalty. The distinction needs no clarification. The Japanese Chin of royalty are descendants of the dogs that warmed the laps of aristocracy and kept court with the ladies back, of the imperial palace. 
They are good companions, bright and alert, naturally clean and eager to please. They make an ideal pet. This is Japanese Chin, number 11. Sometimes a name fits a dog. How about Valentino here for this regal beast? Very fancy. This is a wonderful breed. They're naturally very clean. They come from China, even though they're called Japanese Chin. And they are very lovely. They're independent. They can be a little stubborn. But a nice house pet for sure. Anita Lopker, handler and owner of this dog. Pomeranian, a member of the family win. of dogs known as the Spitz, Pomeranian descended from the sled dogs of Iceland and Lapland. Their ancestors ended up in Germany in the province of Pomerania, where they were bred down to the breed's present size. Right, down and back Poms are extroverts, exhibiting great intelligence and vivacious spirit, making them great companions as well as competitive show dogs. This is Pomeranian number 11. Danny. Pomeranian, all puffed out, as you might expect. His favorite treat, how about string cheese? This is the number six dog in the country. He is the number one toy dog. He has won 28 best in shows this year. Right around to the end. And he does have that trademark double coat. Curtis Smith there, the handler. You can see that string cheese in his hand, trying to make sure that Danny is hitting all his marks. Long Coat Chihuahua. Are you American Chihuahua breeders yes, have produced you. a diminutive dog that has few comparisons in size, symmetry, and conformation, as well as intelligence and alertness. A graceful, alert, quick little dog with saucy expression and terrier-like qualities. Back, the Chihuahua makes a devoted companion to young and old alike. This is the Long Coat Chihuahua, number 15. Now the Long Coat Chihuahua. Spicy personality in the Chihuahuas. This is Muffin. Michelle Scott, the handler. Yes, they're definitely a very outgoing, right friendly the breed. End. They're long lived. They can live up to 20 years, which is great. They're very popular. Are you tonight? Smooth Coat Chihuahua. The Chihuahua's main ancestor was probably the Tichichi, who existed as early as the 9th century as a favorite dog Thank of the Central backwards. American Indians. Chihuahuas appear in numerous stone carvings, and mummies of them have been found in ancient burial sites. The breed comes in two coat varieties, smooth and long. This is the Smooth Coat Chihuahua, number 27. This is bright. Smooth coated Chihuahua. It's judged on the exact same standard as the long coat, except for the difference in the coat. Pekingese. Fascinating by reason of their Asian tonight? background and distinctive personality. Pekingese hold an honored place in the dog world. In ancient times, peaks were held sacred in China, the land of their origin, and the left theft of one was published was punishable by death. Today, they have but one purpose in life, to give understanding, companionship, and loyalty to their owners. It may be truly said that Pekingese fulfill their mission to perfection. This is Pekingese number nine. Hair today, hair every day. It is quite a dedication to grooming if you have a Pekingese that you have to keep in show coat. David Fitzpatrick, the handler here, he has made a name for himself by becoming a very successful Pekingese handler. And he has a real affection for the breed. And you see them all lined up. Dr. Kelly, or excuse me, Dr. Reed right, has Dr. quite Reed the decision to make. Well, this is now when it starts to get a little bit exciting because she's examined each and every dog. Over 600 competitors to start the day in the toy competition in the various breeds. Now the cut down and will decide number one. And again, something different here this year as opposed to revealing the champion first, then second, then third and Let fourth hug, in the seven breeds. Let me have the Shih Tzu. We're going to see her 
announced fourth first, practice? then third, then second, then the first. Point. So keep an eye on that as it comes up. So she off in pincher? But first she's going to make a cut, and here's her cut. She's pulled out the pug, the, the shih tzu, the Chinese crested, the toy poodle, the affin pincher. Here the we have the Havanese. And the Pekingese. The Pomeranian and the Pekingese. So now she may work these dogs a little more. She's going to definitely take a closer look at each in one. She might move them. Each judge has a little bit of a different technique at this point. But unlike normal dog shows, this is a special dog show, and we're going to do something special. We're going to award fourth place first. Now ready. Judge Reed will announce fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. I loved all your dogs. They're absolutely gorgeous. Fourth place this evening will go to the Pekingese. Thank you. Thank you very much. Third place will go to the pug. The pug is third. And again, the pug. <laughs> Thank you so much. Rufus retiring tonight goes out with a third here at the national championship. Not bad in this competition. Oh, he's happy. Second place to the Pomeranian. Pomeranian, number one toy dog in the Thank country. Thank you very much. Getting second place. And first place to the Shih Tzu. The Shih Tzu, there we have it. There's Rocket, the number three toy dog in the country, who's gonna take a couple leaps up after winning tonight so in the much. group. So much. You're welcome, thank you. Mrs. Thank Reed you. has chosen group first, the Shih Tzu, second, the Pomeranian, third, the Pug, fourth, the Pekingese. Well, Rocket, Rocketing right to the top of the rankings here in the toy group. He is the first of the magnificent seven that will vie for best in show coming up tomorrow night here in Orlando. Rocket, the champion in the toy group. Our night just beginning here, the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. Beyond the trophies, there are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people, who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. That's my friend, Cole, and that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. 
To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Now the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship here for the Orange County Convention Center. Jason App, Gina DiNardo already been a little bit of a surprise with Rocket winning the toy group. How surprised are you with that victory for the Shih Tzu? He was actually one of our dogs to watch, so we are doing okay. Batting one for one at the moment. But certainly <laughs> some stiff competition there for Rocket to get the win. Absolutely. It, the toy group across this country is so competitive week in and week out. She could have pointed to any one of those dogs in the lineup and not have been wrong. And again, the Shih Tzu, one of the... 179 recognized breeds here entered to compete in this weekend's competition. Almost 4,200 entries here at the national championship at the various categories. And again, the toy group is done, but plenty of action to come up the rest of tonight. But for more on the winner of that opening group, our Lindsay McCormick is standing by. Lindsay? Hey, guys. Congrats on the win. Your dog is just stunning. And also, we have someone here to reward you as well. We have the president of Royal Canaan, Keith Levy. Well, first of all, congratulations on winning the toy group. Beautiful, beautiful dog. Thank you so, much. so on behalf of the Royal Canaan brand, I'd like to present you with this crystal award, as well as a one-year supply of Royal Canaan Health Nutrition to address all the beautiful characteristics and now champion characteristics this wonderful dog possesses. So congratulations and best of luck and best in show. Wow, that's quite a prize. What, what do you guys think of that? I think that's wonderful. It's very exciting. This is such a great show. It's a wonderful showcase for purebred dogs. And this is really an exciting day. So when I was looking out at your competition and as well as Rocket, it looked like they spent more time grooming than even I spent getting ready for this evening. How long did it take to get ready for tonight's competition? Well, without the bath, it takes a couple of hours to do it, but sometimes it's therapy and you just take longer than you really needed to take just to relax yourself. That's what I tell my boyfriend too. <laughs> um, what do you think the quality was that set your dog apart from the rest? Well, I think they were all beautiful dogs. It was a gorgeous lineup of animals. Rocket has exceptional breed type, and he performed beautifully tonight, and um, I think he's a great ambassador for our breed, so I'm very proud of him. As did the judges. Congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, thank you very much. Certainly an ecstatic winner there. Rocket, a beauty, and that one moving on to the best in show. So the toy group has its competitor to advance to that round of seven. We'll crown that best in show champion coming up tomorrow night. A few more groups to be decided coming up later on tonight, Gina. We have three more groups tonight, but interestingly, a toy dog has never won best in show at the national championship, so maybe this year, Rocket can do it. Rocket says, I can, we'll see. Stay tuned, more coming up from Orlando in this great weekend and the dog show showcase that is this event. Riding the trails of the alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome.
KC Yukonuba National Championship, brought to you in part by Bouncy, the quicker picker-upper. Back here in Orlando at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, 14th annual here in 2014. Yeah, certainly a great showcase event here for the American Kennel Club. Well, late last night here at the Orange County Convention Center, there was a little bit of a surprise from the folks at Yukonuba able to come in and leaving behind 4,000 peak Yukonuba towels, some bounty paper towels, I am shakeables. It was all topped off with a pink bow. The show literally draped in pink when the doors opened this morning. And there you see all the hardworking folks at it, getting busy. There's the bounty paper towels, the I am shakeables, the pink Yukonuba towels, all those little surprises and prizes for everybody here in attendance. Pink bows topping it off. Got to have a little style to go with all those gifts. And certainly the great folks and support from Yukonuba here overseeing this national championship. The AKC Humane Fund Awards for Canine Excellence, also known as the ACE Awards, honor outstanding dogs that demonstrate the power and importance of the human canine bond. This is the 15th year that the AKC has presented the award to dogs in five categories. Exemplary companion dog, search and rescue dog, service dog, therapy dog, and uniform services canine. This year, all five of our ACE winners receive a full year of pet insurance, pet health insurance, courtesy of our sponsor, Pet Partners. And a donation is made in their names to a pet charity of their owner's choice. Join us as we commend these very special dogs. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the ring are AKC board member Patricia M. Cruz and tonight's first ACE recipient. In the category of search and rescue dog, we have Patella, a Labrador retriever, and her owner, Jim Houck of Fort Collins, Colorado. I'm with Jim Houck and Patella, this year's Search and Rescue Ace Award honoree. And she's being honored for this award because of her work with Typhoon Haiyan. Um, I do work with a nonprofit called Global Dirt, it's a disaster immediate response team, and they do different work throughout the world following disasters. And I received a call from the director, and he asked me if I was available to head over. And I said I was, and next thing I know, I was uh, on a very long plane flight with a dog and showed up in Manila and went to work. We went over there on three separate trips and we recovered a large, large number of the missing and helped the families have closure. What did you think when you found out that you guys were receiving the ACE Search and Rescue Award? Uh, I was surprised. I received a phone call and uh, I was actually at work uh -huh. and um, just won the ACE Award from the American Kennel Club, they're like, what? We were definitely shocked and definitely honored. Well, congrats on the award, Jim and Patella. You guys, it's very well deserved. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2014 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Search and Rescue Dog recipient, Patella. Certainly a hearty round of applause from the fans here in Orlando. So many dogs in service in various categories. And to tell a story, one of the amazing ones. AKC is so honored to be able to pay tribute to these dogs and the work they do. This dog being a at the typhoon, the deadliest typhoon in history. Amazing. No, Patella getting honored. Up next, the future of our sport on display. Some of the best junior handlers. That's coming up next from Orlando. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. 
so these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. pedigrees, beyond the competition, beyond the trophies. There are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people, who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 50% off select dog and cat pets, plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Now the Junior Showmanship Competition is coming up here from Orlando. But the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, just more than what you see here in this room tonight. It's uh, multiple days of events. And for more on that, Lindsay McCormick takes us around the activities here this week in Orlando. This is one of my favorite events, the AKC Meet the Breeds, where families can come through, check out the different booths, learn about over 150 AKC breeds and decide which ones are best suited for their family. Guys like Toto over here. Where, where's Dorothy, you guys? She's with the wizard. The AKC added two new breeds to their lineup this year. We have the Couton de Tulliar, and I'm here with Denise and Sante. That's French, correct? The Couton de Tulliar? Yeah. What, what does it mean? Coton is cotton in French, and Tuliar is a city in Madagascar where they originated. So they're really good house dogs. They're wonderful house dogs. They're, they're known as really being true companion dogs. Uh, they're, as you can see, he's just looking at me very, very devoted, very loving, uh, great with children, great family dogs. Well, I think Sante and I are going to get along just fine. And Sante, you said, means cheers. And then that's how you say to your health in French. I'm here with Kathy and Soldier, who's a wired hair bichla. It's another new breed here at the AKC Meet the Breeds. And what type of family is this dog best suited for? A family that's gonna have some activity and do things with them because they do like to do things. They're, they're good in agility, they like to swim. We were dock diving with him yesterday. They're a great hunting dog. They're a good all around family dog, but they do need some activity. What were they originally bred to do? Well, in Hungary, they wanted a Vishla that had more coat for hunting. So that's, they're called an upland hunting dog. And then I saw you guys have an interesting slogan over here. It says there's no point in hunting with an ugly dog. That's right, because you might as well have a dog that you think is good looking. Like who can't, who wouldn't love this face? Junior handlers are the future of our sport, and this evening we are privileged to watch the finals of our junior showmanship competition. Young handlers between the ages of 9 and 18 competed all year long, both academically and in the show ring, to earn a spot in this year's competition. 
To qualify, handlers must have five wins in the open class with competition and have maintained a 3.0 grade point average. Earlier today, 126 juniors competed in the Junior Showmanship preliminary rounds, which were judged by Ms. Cassandra R. Clark from Tustin, California, and Mrs. Linda Clark from Tulsa, Oklahoma. They each selected six finalists, and now the 12 competitors you're about to see will compete for the Best Junior Handler Award. Our stewards are Dr. Charles Garvin, AKC board member Ms. Maribeth O'Neill, AKC Assistant Vice President, and Mrs. Patty Proctor. Judge Miss Helma Weeks from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Please welcome Mrs. Weeks. Now, may we have the Junior Showmanship finalists to the ring, please. We want to acknowledge and thank Yukonuba, who will award scholarships to all four placements in this best junior competition. And here come the parade of juniors. Again, you heard that cut down from today. Over 100 of them here. We have the best of the bunch. And interesting, Gina, the focus here isn't on the dogs, it's on the handlers. That's right. So each junior handler will be judged on their presentation of the dog. The, it's not the confirmation of the dogs that's judged, but the skill of the handlers. So we have a variety of different breeds in here, though there are some that pop up more than others. Like you see like Dobermans are very popular as junior handler dogs, the setters and the pointers. We have a few of those in here tonight. So there are certain breeds that have a technique to presenting them that it's different. And the judge wants to make sure that that technique is used. For example, with the pointer and the Irish setter, they hold the head and the tail. The Doberman, they often bait the dog. And so each junior will develop their own style, but they'll also be, you know, using the techniques that they've seen their mentors use in the rings. What's that process like to find your own style after learning some of the basics? Well, I competed as a junior handler, so I can comment a little bit. It's really what are you most comfortable with so that when you're in the ring and you're nervous and you're still trying to make sure your dog looks its best what do you do to keep yourself calm and what do you do so it's almost automatic there are certain things that you'll do and interesting to see how this goes Could along you take around one more time and then stop there again and this is Helma Weeks from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania wants to have them take another loop around. Maybe that'll help loosen the nerves a little bit, <laughs> it too. It does help a little bit, both the dog and the person. Again, some of the preliminary events in some of the smaller venues around here at the convention center, but now under the lights and with this crowd in here and the cameras, certainly the hearts are a-thumping. Yeah, this is probably the first time for most of these people and probably many of these dogs to be in a great big ring under the lights. It's very exciting. They work all year to achieve the opportunity to be here. They have to win five shows. They have to have a 3.0 grade point average. You could get set up your dog, please. This is junior handler number 443 showing a pointer. And that is Chaz McDonald from the state of North Carolina. Been showing dogs since the age of six. He says his favorite thing about showing Thank dogs is the, the opportunity bike, to travel all around and meet new people, see new places. Okay, thank you. He got involved in showing from his mom Oftentimes, youngsters who parents can participate yeah, like in the sport down and back start out showing. Yeah. 
So it's really important that the junior handler move the dog at the proper pace for the dog. And the judge is going to be evaluating that right now. Also, how does the dog look when it steps in? Does the handler have command of the placement of the dog? Does the handler ever block the dog, you know, the judge from being able to view the dog? So she ch tells Chaz to go to the end of the line. She's still judging him right till he gets to the very end. This is junior handler number 500 showing an Irish setter. And this is Lauren Hull from Leroy, New York. You're talking about all those things they have to remember. What's the hardest thing you think for a junior handler to kind of master? I would say would it most likely here? is what to do when you're nervous. You know, these juniors compete day in and day out on the weekends, and so the they practice their techniques, they practice their grooming, but it's really getting co command of your nerves when it's never the same when you practice as, as it is until you do the real thing. So, And Lauren's been showing since she was eight years old. And following in the footsteps of her mother, who was a junior handler herself. And as you mentioned, such a family sport. Dog shows really are a great family sport. You get in the car, pack it up, go away with not only your family, but man's best friend. And then you f have a whole dog show family that you see on the weekends, Thank even more much. friends. Close to the end, uh, okay. It's a great sport. And Lauren says her most memorable experience, she won her best junior title in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 2009. Realized she could go places with a lot of hard work. This is junior handler number 472, showing a Doberman Pinscher. Abigail Adams from Piedmont, South Carolina, making the trip here to the Sunshine State for this event. Could you show me the bike, please? Okay. How much does dog breed and personality of junior handler kind of have to mesh. Is that important when kind of learning the sport? It's very important that you have an affinity for the breed you're showing, whether it's because you like the characteristics of the breed okay, you or you enjoy the, the process that you need to go through to actually show that breed. Dobermans are fun to show because they're usually very flashy and you can stand back and let them kind of show themselves lots of different techniques to present Doberman, and so you see juniors gravitate to them sometimes as a breed. And this junior, Abigail Adams, yeah. finishing yeah. third at Westminster a couple of years ago, so, so certainly some great results on her resume. This is junior handler number 403 showing a Briard. From Thousand Palms, California, Casey Klang and a lovely Briard. But again, we're focusing on the handler and not the dog. It's it hard to do. It is a lovely Briard, yes, but we are focusing on Casey's skills handling the Briard. Casey started showing when she was five. She, again, she was born into the sport. Her parents have been showing dogs for over 19 years. Another top finisher okay. at Westminster, okay, a second there a year ago. Okay. 
and she says her favorite part about showing is being able to spend time with her mom. They share this love and passion for dog shows, and they get to do it together. Very sweet. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to focus on Casey, but it's kind of hard not to look at that beautiful dog, too. It's a beautiful dog, dog absolutely. <laughs> it's well-groomed. She's done a nice job presenting it with a well-groomed coat. the judge was smiling too maybe she likes the briard as well thank you yeah. and towards the end of the line please <laughs> well, i wonder what happened to the light there is the light <laughs> this is junior handler number 499 showing a doberman pincher Carly Howard from Edmond, Oklahoma with the Doberman. And dog shows really are multi-generational. Carly said she started showing with her grandmother when she was 10 years old. Could you show me the bite, please? So she's asking to show the bite because in this breed, yeah. there's a disqualification for okay, the number of you. teeth. So in the regular dog show ring, the handler would have to show the teeth to the judge. Would you move down and back, please? Certainly a lot of folks that may have been in this position before, maybe junior handlers of the past, looking on. Great to see some of these performers, both dogs and handlers, that may be vying for a best in show in future years. Absolutely. We'll take a look at the best in show lineup and see how many of them were junior handlers when we get to tomorrow night. I'm sure it's going to be a pretty high number. Um, might be a few in there for sure. This is junior handler number 512 showing a great Dane. Well, there's no size requirement for dog or handler, mm -hmm. especially when dog is as big as handler in this great Dane for Emma Rogers from Mansfield, New Jersey. Emma's been showing since she was nine. Show me the bike, I'm not please? sure how old she is now. She might be nine right now. I actually was this little showing this breed myself, uh, so I understand. She has to have a great command of this breed because uh, it's hard to move those legs. They're heavy. And when you're that you teeny, you have to have a very well-trained dog. Now you need to be in command, but is there an intimidation factor with such a big dog? No. This is a very great Danes are very sweet by nature. And... Uh, I think the crowd appreciates the fact that she's showing such a large breed. Ask Emma about what she likes about showing dogs. I like everything, <laughs> exclamation point. What's there not to like? You get to spend the day hanging out with your best friend. That's very good. Thank you. Could you go to the end of the line, please? You see, she keeps the leash very tight up You're next welcome. to the dog's head so that she has really good control over the dog. <laughs> she knows her stuff. This is junior handler number 490 showing a Rottweiler. Danielle Myers here from the state of Connecticut. Another one that's been involved in this sport from an early age, at age nine. It's a recurring theme. <laughs> Start young, keep keep showing. Could you show me the, the bite, please? Okay, 
Okay, thank you. And what Danielle says she likes most about yeah, showing is being able to work with the different breeds, and she learns different things every time she shows an, a, a new breed. Maybe a future professional handler in our midst. Is it important to kind of get one breed down and then go to another, or is it good to have that all-encompassing experience? I think that it's helpful to get nailed down the one breed you like to show and do that well first, but... You know, some of these juniors will apprentice or help out professional handlers, and th that's how they get to start showing other breeds. And, you know, you have handlers who are specialists in a breed, and then you have people we call all-rounder handlers who actually are uh, experienced in showing nine, many please. different breeds. And this is how you start. Well, finally giving that bait to the Rottweil. A little kiss as well for a job well done mm -hmm. for Danielle Myers and her mate. This is junior handler number 466 showing a bull mastiff. Kristen O'Brien, home game for her here from the state of Florida. <laughs> and Kristen uh, won best junior handler at Westminster. So she's going to be trying to uh, Would you show me his bike do here? best junior handler here as well. Great look from our camera folks at that showcase of the bite to the judge, Mrs. Helma Weeks. Can you go down and back, please? doing a good job of keeping him at a nice steady even pace moving in a straight line which is not always easy when you have a 90 pound dog on the other end of the leash happy tail happy dog in there thank you we'll go down to the end of the line please That's Kristen O'Brien. This is junior handler number 449 showing a Kerry Blue Terrier. Alexis Schlott from Reinholds, Pennsylvania. Look at her work showcasing that Terry Blue bite, Terrier. Please? She's sh properly showing the head, okay, now you. the bite. Okay. Thank you. And go down and back, please. Some of these competitors that have been waiting in that line finally get that opportunity maybe to get rid of some of that nervous <laughs> energy and get moving. I always like to be at the front of the line and then have the rest of the you know time to watch my competition and hang out. Tent little look there. Oh, and there's a waggy tail Thank too. <laughs> Down the back, please. And a good smile from Alexis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> These dogs, they love being shown. They love being in the ring. They like getting out of the house. They like spending time with their owners. It really is fun for the dogs as well. The lights are over there. <laughs> she's telling them to put the table. We have a little light there, so we know it's in the right spot, and she's correcting him. <laughs> This is junior handler number 413 showing a Border Terrier. Need the table for the little guy here, Border Terrier, Caleb I Campbell. 
he did a very interesting thing. Before he put the dog on the table, he checked to make sure that it was sturdy. Did you see that? He put his hand around the table to make sure it wasn't going to fall before he put his dog on it. It's really pretty, pretty smart. From Sumner, Washington, is Caleb. Can you show me his bike, please? Thank you. And certainly success with this breed. We talked about do you try different breeds? Do you stick with one? Caleb's won best junior handler at the Border Terrier National Specialty three years running. He's you found his breed, it sounds like. I mean, you know. And he says his favorite thing about showing is having the opportunity to spend time with his dog. That is a cute little dog. Uh, uh, watch the handlers. <laughs> I'm watching him. <laughs> This is one of my favorite breeds, I have to say. There he's there, we fixed him. You ideally piece. like to have Thank the dogs, you. all the four legs square. And so sometimes you'll see they'll try to fiddle with them to get them to move just a little bit to have that perfect four square stance. This is junior handler number 437 showing a Dindy Dinmont Terrier. Another one from the state of Washington, Amy Judge from Custer, Washington. Long way from the Pacific Northwest mm -hmm. here to Florida. But Amy, ready to go. There's only one national championship. You've got to make the trek when you qualify. Could you show me his bike, please? talk about having to win some competitions to get here, but also the focus on yeah, academics and having a well-rounded handler, good student athlete, That's if you right. will, here. When we created this event and we were discussing the junior showmanship competition, we thought it was really important that there be a, a GPA component to qualifying because, you know, academics are important. Certainly the diligence you'd see in the classroom certainly show itself in the sport of handling dogs. You learn great composure. You learn proper etiquette. You have to get dressed up. And oh, it looks like he's a little itch or something. <laughs> OK, thank you. Go to the end of the line, please. This is junior handler number 414 showing a Tibetan Spaniel. And the last of our junior handlers, Colleen Longley from Granby, Connecticut. So she's been waiting it out. <laughs> and again, the judge is watching the handler, but she's also looking at the relationship too with the dog and handler. She's intently looking at the dog because the as I was, I was taught, the best handlers are almost invisible. They just melt into the background and the dog is there. And you're supposed to judge case? the person as person's technique based on that and their proper presentation of the dog. So in the regular ring, you would be looking at the dog. In the junior's ring, you're also going to look at the dog. Colleen, been showing dogs since age five, loves all the friends she's made along the way. So you're trying to get him to take a few steps, stand that four square. 
Okay, thank you. If you'll go to the end of the line, please. Well, the showcase <laughs> for the junior handlers, it's through. And now it's time for the judge's decision mm -hmm. here to see okay, who's the best of the bunch. Again, could I? I can move so she also. will yeah. pick uh, first through fourth placements, but the first place dog will be, first place handler will be given also the award best junior handler. So even though they'll go one, two, three, four, that number one is the best junior handler. So the best handlers now will do what they can to ensure that their dog looks as perfect as possible. And if they feel like there's some aspect of the dog they want the judge to notice, they would try to show that off, whether it's the head, the neck. Like she's doing right there with her Doberman. And it's OK if they move. And they quickly set it back. That's showing that they have good skills and they're paying attention to their dog. <laughs> She's being very deliberate. She's giving each junior their time to shine. She's doing a very nice job. tension mounting mm -hmm. as she gets to the end of the line. <laughs> it's quiet in here right now. <laughs> she's trying to decide if she's going to move them again or not. Do you please take them around one at a time? Yep. So just when these juniors thought maybe they were going to find out, <laughs> a little more work to be done. They have to work a little harder. And why not? They all earned the chance, essentially, all to take a little bit of a victory lap here, qualifying for this national championship, and the crowd showing its appreciation. It's a big deal to be the top 12 finalists of all the junior handlers in the country. Rogers there with her great Dane getting a healthy round of applause. All these handlers in this adulation for the crowd here in Orlando will deserve. A couple more to make their last lap and then Decision time, <laughs> we think? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Elma Weeks is making us, making everybody sweat for it here <laughs> to see who's going to be the best in this class. Looks like she's decided. Our stewards are Marabeth O'Neill, who's 
Assistant Vice President at the American Kennel Club, uh, Dr. Charles Garvin, AKC Board of Directors member, who was a junior showmanship winner himself when he was a young man. Number one is the Irish setter. And giving first place out here in the traditional format, and it is the Irish setter. You're welcome. And her Number handler, Victorious. Lauren Hull of Leroy, New York, winning that junior championship. Number three is the Great Dane. Emma Rogers there and that Great Dane taking You're third. Welcome. And number four is the Border Terrier. And the Border <coughs> Terrier coming home in fourth. It's Caleb Campbell, second place going to Carly Howard of Edmond, Oklahoma with the Doberman. But again, Lauren Hull and the Irish Setter. Oh, the winner here, this junior championship. Oh, wait a minute, where are they? Mrs. Weeks has selected Lauren Hall from New York, showing an Irish setter. Which was the number? I don't I need the number. So the state of New York represented here. Lauren Hall is your junior showmanship championship in Orlando at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Here at the Orange County Convention Center in Orlando, Florida, Jason Abb, Gina DiNardo, Lindsey McCormick, all with you. Glad to have you along for the ride here this championship weekend. And what we just saw in the Junior Showmanship competition, a happy Lauren Hall with her Irish setter as she wins the title as the best junior handler. And right now, Lindsey is standing by with Lauren. Lauren, you looked like a professional out there, but when the judge had you take them around one more time, were you nervous at all? A little bit. I mean, I love showing dogs, so I knew I had to show my dogs and I had to push my nerves aside and just show my dog. How many wins did it take to bring you here? It took me five wins in the open class. I'm in the open senior class, so I had to beat people five times. Wow. Um, how long have you been showing Kent? Well, I've been showing since I was eight, so eight years. What are your next steps? Um, my next steps, I'm not sure. This was really my only goal for this year. So I guess we'll see from there. We'll go from there. Well, I'm excited to watch your bright future, and I know Jason is as well. Jason, back to you. Lindsay, Lauren, thank you very much. Well, certainly when you achieve a goal, time to celebrate that and then set a new one. So the stakes are now raised a little bit for Lauren Holm from New York.
winning her Junior Showmanship Championship. How about another new event here, the Yukonuba Breeder Stakes? This could be full of intrigue. We'll get you there in a moment. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. This is the Duracell Power Mat Go Power Kit. It includes a power mat and a power case. They help make sure your iPhone 5 or 5S is always charged and protected. The power case is powerful enough to give you up to 100% extra battery power, protective enough to shield your iPhone from nicks and bruises, and sleek enough that you won't notice it's there until you need it. The power mat makes recharging effortless. Instead of looking around for a cable, simply set your case down and you're charging wirelessly. So how does it work? Well. The power case comes with a built-in 2,000 milliamp rechargeable battery that gives you up to 100% extra power and eight hours added talk time. Just slide your iPhone into the case and charge anywhere at the press of a button. The four LED lights indicate the level of battery charge of your backup battery. To recharge your iPhone and power case, place it on the center of your power mat. The power mat charges as quickly as a typical wall outlet, and it's smart too. It will fully charge your iPhone first and only then start charging the backup battery in your power case. When you're away from a power mat, you can also recharge your iPhone and power case via regular micro USB cable. Leave your iPhone charging overnight and you'll wake up to the great feeling of having up to 200% battery power to last you throughout the day. Visit DuracellPowerMat.com for more information and to bring the power home to your iPhone. Back at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Now it's time for the Yukonuba Breeder Stakes, brought to you by Yukonuba, extraordinary nutrition for extraordinary dogs. And by Jonar, the original professional whelping box. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jason Taylor, Yukonuba Communications Director and Assistant Show Chairman. You. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. As a fellow breeder of Afghan hounds, I am so proud to introduce you to a special event celebrating breeders and breeding. Welcome to the third North American Yukonuba Breeder Stakes Championship. The Breeder Stakes is a celebration of breeders and their breeding programs. During the past year, Yukonuba held five regional breeder stakes competitions across the United States and Canada, where more than 350 breeders presented three examples from their breeding programs in this unique competition. There, our breeder judges chose group winners and awarded a best in breeder stakes. Tonight, those winners appear here with their dogs, courtesy of Yukonuba. We will honor these winners and crown the Yukonuba North American champion who will win the grand prize of a beautiful John Art whelping box. You will identify the breeder as the first handler in each trio of dogs. Our ring steward for this event will be Ms. Vicki Seiler. Vicki's an accomplished handler in her own right, and now the manager of Yukonuba's Breeder Communications and the project manager for the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. So, let's meet our winning breeders and their dogs. 
from the Northwest Regional Stakes held at the Rose City Cluster in Portland, Oregon, Ingrid Leiden of Nakiska, Newfoundland. The Nakiska breeding program is the passion of Ingrid and her husband Chris, and over the years they have juggled their careers in teaching and business while showing and working with their dogs, maintaining a small program. Almost 100 Nakiska Newfoundlands have earned their AKC championships. They have bred multiple all-breed best in show winners, as well as many national specialty winners. Ingrid breeds for a well-rounded Newfoundland, and they are proud to say they rank in the top five kennels to have awards for versatile Newfoundland. Welcome, breeder, Ingrid Leiden. Please welcome the winner of the Southern Regional Competition held in Louisville, Kentucky, Elaine Paquette of Quiche Bouvier. Elaine. Her sister Louise and late mother Christine have been involved in the sport of dogs since 1978. Their kennel is a name that has become synonymous with the Bouvier breed all over the world. Team Paquette has bred more than 100 champions and amassed well over 100 bests in show in three countries, including seven national specialty best of breeds. Elaine has had the lead of one of her dogs 13 times in the top dog all breed spot in her native Canada. Elaine and her family have been the only breeder honored by receiving the Breeder of the Decade Award by both the American and Canadian parent organizations. Ladies and gentlemen, breeder Elaine Paquette. From the Western region, chosen in Vallejo, California, this is Angie Mata. Angie began Bonnie Day Bouviers with her first litter in 2005. Dale Sullivan joined Angie as co-breeder and partner of Bonnie Day in 2008. Together they strive to breed healthy Bouviers with sound temperaments. Pedigrees are carefully analyzed and each litter is planned with an eye towards the best possible outcome. Bonnie Day produced many generations of group and best in show winners. They have also had many futurity and specialty winners. Ladies and gentlemen, breeder Angie Mata. From the Midwest region, chosen in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Brooke Birth. Brooke bases her Gunther's Boston Terrier breeding program on quality of type, temperament, and movement that she produces generation after generation. Brooke is the breeder of Gunther's Gussied Up Edna, the winningest Boston Terrier in history, a multiple best in show winner, number one Boston Terrier in 2012 and 2013, and the national specialty show winner. She was also Boston Terrier of the Year in 2012 and 14, and won the Grand Futurity in 2011. She is dedicated to her breed and serves on the National and Local Breed Club's Board of Directors and was Editor-in-Chief of the National Newsletter Ladies and gentlemen, Breeder Brooke Birth. And from the mountain region, chosen in Greeley, Colorado. Our mountain region finalist was chosen. Please welcome Carrie Snavely of High Mountain Smooth Fox Terriers. Carrie and Richard have been breeder exhibitors of Smooth Fox Terriers for 25 years. To date, they have had over 60 AKC champions, including Best in Show and Best in Specialty winners, as well as numerous Terrier group winners. There is almost always at least one high mountain dog in the top 10 for the breed in the United States. They also have Best in Show and Best in Specialty Show winners in several foreign countries. They are proud to have developed a family of dogs that is recognized by breeders and judges wherever they go. Ladies and gentlemen, breeder Carrie Snavely. These are our finalists. And now I'll introduce you to our MC, who is an accomplished breeder of Afghan hounds himself, as well as a world-renowned handler. Today he serves the American Kennel Club Director of Event Management and the manager of the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Please welcome Michael Canalizo. 
Thank you very much, JC. I've been very fortunate to be at almost every Breeders' Stakes that has happened for the last three years. And all these efforts that everybody's seen comes in bunches of 40, 50, and 60 at a time. And it's wonderful to be here tonight with these winners. And it's even more wonderful to introduce to you the judge that will be making this decision. Our judge has been a mystery until this moment to all of the people in the ring. This year's judge for the 2014 Yukonuba Breeders Stakes Championship registered her first litter in 1951. Her most recent litter was this year. Her breeding program has produced the top sire and dam in the breed's history, as well as the breed's top winners. She began early with her achievements winning Gaines Girl Show Dog Fancier of 1952. She won Winky Awards as Breeder of the Year and Owner Handler of the Year repeatedly in her campaigning years. She has won the Lifetime Achievement Award honoree in 2012, won two FIDO Awards as Dog Woman of the Year and Dog Writer of the Year. AKC selected her as Hound Breeder of the Year in 2004. She has won the Hound Group at the Westminster Kennel Club an incredible 10 times and two bred by exhibitor groups at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, all owner handled. Her most names such as Vagabond, Howdy Rowdy, Nimbus, Marquetta, Silver Shadow, Voyager, and the most current Norseman among her legendary hounds. She has handled her own dogs to top 10 all breed status on 10 different occasions while holding down a full-time teaching job. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the legendary Mrs. Patricia Trotter. Not too fast, Jim, I mean he is. A moment every breeder should probably experience once. Enjoy yourself. So the judge has been unveiled. Mm -hmm. So that certainly opened some eyes. Again, keeping that under wraps till now. Yeah, that's cool. It's not uh, in all other parts of the traditional dog show. You know the judges before you enter the show, and it's standard procedure. And so it's cool to have a secret element. And this is also very different in the sense that we're judging three dogs at a time. The breeder is the first uh, person in the trio. And now the dogs will be judged instead of just against the standard. They will, of course, be judged against the standard, but they're also going to be judged against uh, for consistency of breed type. Not do they look exactly alike, but do the important attributes of that breed come through in each of the respective dogs in the trio. So we expect related dogs in this They group? are related. They absolutely are related. Ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, this is, give me up. Ladies. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So she's going to examine the first trio of Newfoundlands. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very unique competition and it's structured a little differently. Obviously, you can tell we have two sets of one breed. Sometimes we'll get four sets, five sets in one of the breed of stakes competitions. This is not a stud dog class or a brood bitch class. This is an, a representation of at least two litters bred by the same persons, and it's to ha show us the consistency that the line produces. So you're not judging necessarily on that they all look alike and maybe share common problems or just on uniformity. You're judging the substance of the breeding program as well as the dog's consistency in form and type. Is it threesome? That's a threesome down yes. back. 
side by side as a threesome, down and back. Yeah. So now they're going to move side by side as a trio. Which is cool. Like, who sees three Newfoundlands going down and back all at the same time? <laughs> not going to see it's that really in cool. your, your neighborhood. No, not down Main Street. And we'll take them all around together. Our next trio is Bouvier de Flanders. Congratulations. Thank you. What a beautiful necklace. Thank you. Winners of the South Region. Yep. A lot one? of what you'll see here. And the breeder is always the first person in line, so they, you can identify who they are by just seeing the first person knowing that's the breeder. You can see any of these competitions during the year, and youcanuber.com will have the, the youcanuberbreederstakes.com will have the list of the upcoming events for 2015. What's really important about our show, the AKC Yukonuba National Championship, is its emphasis on breeders. And so, again, this is a new element for this year. But again, it's a new element that emphasizes the role of the breeder, who's really the backbone of our sport, the person who provides beautiful puppies for America. <coughs> Without breeders, there are no puppies in your home or mine. In three dogs, almost little three different shades there, kind of like having three different sports cars, <laughs> different colors. Uh, those are the acceptable colors, and uh, but there is a, a variance there. All beautiful. We're gonna go in a single it's pretty impressive to see three out. big, beautiful dogs together. Even for me, I've been, I'm loving this. Take one in gray, take one in black, <laughs> take one in charcoal. <laughs> Which do you like best? I'm a charcoal girl myself. All the dogs you see here tonight, Congratulations. the prize for the winning their individual breeder stakes in their different sections was the expense paid trip here to join us in Orlando tonight for the finals, as well as a nice handsome cash award and a gift certificate from the Joan Art Whelping Box Company. Now this group representing the West. Another trio of Bouvier. How old is this? I love, have you noticed that a lot of the handlers are wearing Yukonuba so pink and that they're, co they're coordinating their outfits. Not only are their dogs supposed to look alike, but they're making their outfits look alike. It's totally fun. All part of the team. And we're going to go side by side, down and back, side by side, down and back. Side by side, down and back, okay? Side by side, down and back. Over here, please, ma'am. So we won't be interfering with that thing on the floor, okay. yeah. Great look at those wonderful creatures in motion. And she has her work cut out for her. It's very hard to watch the movement of three dogs, you know, at the same time she's trying to It'll actually process all of that. Right it's, a, it's a challenge because it's not how you normally judge dogs. But she's up to the tax. She is an expert judge.
the tables coming out. And here come the Boston Terriers. They get props for the Yukonuba pink. <laughs> Congratulations on this honor. See them go. We're going to go over to the side, away from the medallion on the floor. Did you say right. she's going to go side by she side? She wants them to, to go, go down towards the, the side, away from the medallion on the floor when they move, because sometimes dogs, when they look down and they see that, it would it would might startle them. They might try to jump over it. They may not give their best performance. You see, all night we'll have the dogs go down and back on the blue carpet. The equivalent of flash photography, yes, if you will, exactly. to startle them. And you don't want to do anything to mess them up in this important arena. And we're going to go single file together around, all right? Now they'll line them up. Yep. One more look. The collection of dogs we see here tonight represents over 240 breeders competing in the various competitions held in the different zones throughout the year. That's 240 breeders. That's a huge amount of AKC purebred dogs competing to get to this point. So representing the mountain region, the high mountain smooth fox terriers. <laughs> Fitting. Very fitting. How old is this one? What's really special about this event is we have is what we call national specialties, which are the events uh, for like one, each breed will have one big event for just their breed every year. Only those people who participate at those events would get to see yeah. top breeders with a, a row of their get. The so and so this is a way the for breeders to showcase their and art and what they do side side to people back. who are in other groups and right. who would never have the opportunity to see, you know, a whole breeding program of one breeder. It's really an honor to be able to compete in this. Crowd enjoying, chance to see. These trios of animals. That was a very good turn. Did you see that? They were all, that was very well choreographed. That was synchronized <laughs> turning yeah, right there. Yeah, that was excellent. They look pretty awesome out there. All right, ladies. Now we're going to go single file on around to the end of the line. Again, getting them all aligned before beginning the procession around. We'd like Pat to take another look at this wonderful collection. And when she gets to the end of this line, I'll ask them to go around one, at a, one group at a time. And again, remember not looking at just one dog, but looking at the grouping of three, that's the best. Exactly. Good when breeze. you're ready, Pat, we'll have them go around. Please, the first trio. Let's hear a nice round of applause for our Newfoundland breeder. A breeder's goal is to be able to create and, and our Bouvier breeders. 
healthy, well-conformed dogs generation after generation. So they were saying earlier, these and dogs have to represent Bouvier at least breeders. two generations of a breeding program. And so that's what they're showcasing, their ability the Boston to Terriers produce quality out. dogs generation after generation. And our breeder of the Smooth Fox Terriers. Giving this group the once over one more time. It's a very hard choice, I would think. All right, Patricia's ah. made her <laughs> mind. And in joining Vicki Seiler is Renee Allen, who gives the every new litter a great start with her Joan Art Whelping boxes. The winner of tonight, the grand prize, is a Joan Art Whelping box. And Patricia, when you're ready, identify your winner of the Northeast uh, Breeded Stakes. For 2014. Uh, Sorry. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. And rightly so. This is a wonderful evening celebrating breeders all over the world. And we thank AKC and Yukonuba for joining forces. The winning threesome was very consistent in breed type. You know, our breeders are not only the backbone of our sport, but they're the heart and soul of it. And these dogs represent, I don't know how many years of effort on the part of their breeders to keep the breed pure and preserve it. The three dogs I'm selecting today share common qualities for their breed. They're strong dogs, very functional. They're compact and square, good strong backs and loins. All of you had beautiful trios, and I thank you for bringing them. Congratulations for winning your uh, area and regional events. Today, these Bouviers will be the winners. The Bouviers from the South Region are the champs here in 2014 of the Yukonuba Breeder Stakes. Well, that was exciting, and no one has ever seen this kind of event on television before, or a televised dog show. Of, I think it's what Mrs. Trotter said is exactly right. Breeders are the backbone of the sport, and we're happy to be able to celebrate them. So we've crowned a champion in the breeder strikes, in the toy group, in the junior showmanship division. More action coming up from Orlando. Stay with us. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome.
AKCU Canuba National Championship here in Orlando. What a great showcase in the Canuba Breeder Stakes. We just witnessed the Rubiers from the South Region winning. And our Lindsay McCormick is standing by with some happy winners as you look at them parade around and get awarded that national championship. Lindsay? Jason, Elaine, congrats. How long have you been breeding dogs for? We have been breeding dogs for over 35 years. Explain to me the generations that the judges saw this evening. Every dog um, is, some of the dogs that you've seen here are over seven and eight generations of our own breeding. Wow. Um, what is one trait that you've seen passed down from generation to generation that you hope continues? Well, we've always believed in that Bouvier should be powerful and should have very strong features into their movement of open, free side gate. And um, that's what we usually strive for, yeah. That sounds like a winning combination, and congrats again. Jason, you're pretty powerful, too. Yeah, but I wouldn't mess with those Bouviers. They're beautiful and powerful and champions here in Orlando. Now the Hound groups coming up, one of the featured groups on the night. We'll also have another ace award to hand out when we return here to the NKCU Canuba National Championship. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. This is the Duracell Power Mat Go Power Kit. It includes a power mat and a power case. They help make sure your iPhone 5 or 5S is always charged and protected. The power case is powerful enough to give you up to 100% extra battery power, protective enough to shield your iPhone from nicks and bruises, and sleek enough that you won't notice it's there until you need it. The power mat makes recharging effortless. Instead of looking around for a cable, simply set your case down, and you're charging wirelessly. So how does it work? Well, the power case comes with a built-in 2,000 milliamp rechargeable battery that gives you up to 100% extra power and 8 hours added talk time. Just slide your iPhone into the case and charge anywhere at the press of a button. The four LED lights indicate the level of battery charge of your backup battery. To recharge your iPhone and power case, place it on the center of your power mat. The power mat charges as quickly as a typical wall outlet, and it's smart too. It will fully charge your iPhone first and only then start charging the backup battery in your power case. When you're away from a power mat, you can also recharge your iPhone and power case via regular micro USB cable. Leave your iPhone charging overnight and you'll wake up to the great feeling of having up to 200% battery power to last you throughout the day. Visit DuracellPowerMat.com for more information and to bring the power home to your iPhone. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 50% off select dog and cat beds. Plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the ring are AKC Board Vice Chairman, Dr. J. Charles Garvin, and tonight's second ACE recipient, in the category of therapy dog, we have Xander, a pug and his owners, Rodney and Marcy Beatty of Klamath Falls, Oregon. Someone on Facebook. I'm here with Rodney and Marcy Beatty and their lovely dog, Xander. 
who is the Therapy Dog Ace Award honoree this year. How did you guys meet Xander? Xander came in to get a bath for a shelter event to get him and other dogs adopted. And I saw him and I just fell in love with him. What other organizations does Xander work well, with? Well, he's the only, right now, the only therapy dog that uh, Sky Lakes Medical Center there in Climate Falls has. He works for CARES uh, a Child Advocate Center and he's their only therapy dog. He's the ambassador for a group called Hands and Words and Not For Hurting International. What did it feel like when you found out that Xander was an honoree for the Ace Award? I was actually at work when it happened and I literally started almost crying because for him to be able to, to get such a prestigious award, it was, uh, it just took me up and I called my wife and I could hardly even get it out that he actually won the ACE Award. Well, congratulations. It's very well deserved. And we're excited to see more of Xander and the different lives he's going to impact. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2014 American Kennel Club Humane Fund ACE Award Therapy Dog recipient, Xander. Tita, what a redemption story for Xander. Lost both of his eyes in an accident, was put up for adoption early in his life, and found a loving family and really able to make an impact in other lives. Therapy dogs uh, impact so many people's lives every day, and the owners who love them, who go out of their way to share their dog with people in need, it's just a wonderful, touching story. Thanks to Xander and the BDs from the state of Oregon. Well, hope you're enjoying the action wherever you are, whether you're with us or Orlando or around the globe. Jason Knapp, Gina DiNardo here from the American Kennel Club. Been a fun night so far, but now the hound group is here. The second group of the evening. Who will get into that next spot for best in show? We can't wait to find out. There's lots of beautiful hounds, and they're about to come into the ring. Let's take a look at some of the things we'll be looking for in this group uh, with this hound class. Give me some of the characteristics we're going to see from the hounds. Well, there are two main types of hounds. We have scent hounds and sight hounds. The taller hounds are usually the sight hounds and the shorter legged hounds, the scent hounds. And uh, they're fabulous dogs. They're very smart. They work and help man in things like tracking and trailing. They pursue prey by sight or sound. And they work in diverse landscapes and climates. They're an amazing bunch of dogs. Can't wait to see him. Yeah, certainly. Ready for the hounds. And you told me it's okay to say, unleash the hounds. Absolutely. Here we go. <laughs> it's time for the hound group. Please welcome from Escondido, California, Mr. Michael J. Doherty. Our steward for the Hound Group this evening is AKC board member, Mr. Thomas Powers. May we have the Hound Group, please. With 31 dogs in the Hound Group. It's gonna take a few minutes to get them all in the ring. Some absolutely gorgeous dogs in this group. The Bloodhound, Black and Tan Coonhound. Not quite everybody in the house yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> With 30 plus. The Whippet and the Basenji, the PBGB. There's a the Basset Hound. There's a, a beagle. There's two beagles because we have a 13 and a 15 inch. There's a Portuguese Pedango. And here come the dachshunds, last but not least.
Judge Doherty is going to start, as most judges do, at the beginning of the group. Just take a nice, quick look down the line. Assess the entire collection of beautiful dogs. We alluded to before that initial impression as you look at Michael J. Doherty taking a first up-close glance at all these fine animals, all their breed winners earlier in this competition. That first look at least makes you take a little mental picture and look for them when you get the up-close visit later on. Absolutely. He started out uh, with hounds. His first dog was a Whippet back in 1963. He became an AKC-approved judge back in 1974. And in addition to the hound group, he also judges the terrier group and some of the non-sporting breeds. And we're going to start with the Afghan Hound. Afghan Hound. Ancient kings of Afghanistan were sure to, sure to have a kennel of Afghan Hounds. Today, while Afghan Hounds often gaze into the distance looking for the wolves, snow leopards, and deer they were bred to pursue, they are most typically kept for their beauty and elegance by individuals who are willing to accord them the luxuries to which they were accustomed. This is Afghan Hound number 53. And this is Justin, maybe a little bit of a glamour boy here with that beautiful makeup. Well, they're supposed to have a very thick, silky hair and trademark uh, shorter hair across the back, you can see, and then the beautiful top knot of hair. They are a very independent and intelligent breed, but not necessarily your most obedient. They can be stubborn, but they're bred for to be agile hunters and to be very independent in mind because they would hunt out alone without people. So uh, they prize that independence. It can be hard sometimes as a pet, but that's what they're, how they're supposed to be. Zach Helmer is the handler. And this dog, grand champion, multiple specialty wins. We have the Rhodesian Ridgeback. This is a very... Rhodesian Ridgeback. Rhodesian Ridgebacks were developed around the 18th century in South Africa and Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, to serve many functions. They hunted game of all types, including lions and protected home and family. The trademarks of the breed are the forward-growing ridge of hair along their back and their fearless heart. This is Rhodesian Ridgeback, number 39. Very athletic, agile, smart breed. That is Desmond, led by Daniel Martin. Saluki. Salukis are another ancient breed, thought to have come from the time of the pharaohs. They were declared sacred by early Muslims. Salukis were used to hunt by nomadic tribes in the desert, and as a result were found from Egypt to Persia. They were bred to be sprinters in order to bring down gazelle. Their speed is phenomenal and sight remarkable. This is Saluki number five. This is Snapple. Salukis are very agile hunters. They're supposed to be very graceful. This one has the typical trademark, narrow, elegant head. Snapple has a very special little girl in his life named Mary Grace. That's his bed buddy. She's six years old. Now at the end of the day, these show dogs, while they're beautiful and glamorous, they're still family pets. And Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, they're laying on the couch and sleeping in our beds. Borzoi. 
Born to the aristocracy of Tsarist Russia, Borzoi hunted wolves in elaborate ritual hunts. The dogs pursued, captured, and pinned the wolves, holding them until the arrival of their masters. The wolves were then released. Today, the breed's popularity continues in lure coursing events. They're also known to run just for the sheer joy of it. This is Borzoi, number 25. This is Royal. And the owner handling tonight, Elizabeth Szymanski. This is another hound that hunts by sight. And you need to have speed, agility, endurance, and that's basically the form follows the function. The structure of the dog ensures that they'll be agile and fast and have endurance. Michael Doherty getting a different angle to view Royal here in motion. Again, 30 plus dogs for him to oversee and pick a winner. Greyhound. Ownership of greyhounds during the earliest years was limited to the Egyptian ruling class and dogs of their type probably date back prior to 2700 BC. They have been used to hunt deer, foxes and stags but their natural quarry is the hare. This breed is probably best known, however, as a racing and coursing dog. This is Greyhound number six. Speed Demon. <laughs> Look at that little gate, too. This is Gia, an American and Brazilian grand champion. It's gone best in show both in the United States and Brazil. Favorite food chicken, by the way. <laughs> I think the Greyhound's thinking, look, just let's make this a race. Well, I, they got are. It, I got it covered. They're built for speed. <laughs> they're very quiet to live with, but the, they're speed demons. Gorgeous. Irish Wolfhound. The earliest Irish literature makes reference to the Irish Wolfhound, and by the 4th century AD, the breed was known in Rome. This is the tallest of all breeds, and one of the largest wolfhounds were used for both hunting wolves and the gigantic Irish elk. While they are courageous, intimidating hunters, they are generally calm and gentle by nature. This is Irish Wolfhound number 29. You may have seen the dog's full registered name there. Just goes by Dr. Gonzo. <laughs> well, the doctor is in. It's shown by Peter Kubox, who grew up in the sport as a junior handler. Watched him since he was a young boy. He says he's been going to dog shows since he was in the womb, <laughs> which <laughs> is true. Dr. Gonzo showcasing himself with help from Peter. <laughs> Scottish Deerhound. Descended from the greyhound-like dogs of the British Isles, the Scottish Deerhound is described as early as the 16th century. Another of the breeds kept exclusively by nobility, they were considered to be the breed best suited to the purest and killing of deer due to their combination of speed and strength. The Scottish Deerhound remains relatively rare today. This is Scottish Deerhound number 11. Been talking throughout the night about how names and dogs sometimes fit. Scottish Deerhound, how about Banger, as in <laughs> Bangers and Mash? Shown by his owner, Lynn Kyer, and she said, I met a Deerhound when I was a freshman in college, and I knew it was the breed for me, and 20 years later, here I am. She got her first one. Ibethan hounds. Ibethan hounds, another of the ancient Egyptian hounds, can trace their origins to the pharaohs. It is surmised that the seagoing Phoenicians carried this breed to the island of Ibiza, where it got its name. Due to the scarcity of food, the dogs learned to hunt with great skill, purpose, and tenacity. They are still excellent hunters and watchdogs. This is Ibizan hound number eight. And this beauty is named Betty. Likes to shake paws to hands and then give you a kiss, although maybe not right now. She's got other things on her mind. They have trademark deer-like ears, those great big ears. They've 
great vision, good nose. Actually, their their parent club says that they're really a three-way hunter. Even though they're a sight hound, they rely a lot on their ears and their nose as well. Otter hound, probably originating as a variation of French breeds. The otter hound's earliest descriptions are from English works of the 12th century. Used to control burgeoning otter populations, these web-footed dogs are excellent swimmers. They have a heavy, somewhat harsh, oily outer coat. Their working instinct is unfailing. This is Outer Hound number five. Otter hounds are one of the rarer breeds in the United States. This is the number one otter hound all systems. He's the number eight hound in the country. He has won seven best in shows this year, over 50 group firsts. Handler Jason McElwain is a third generation dog show participant. And have been handling and breeding otter hounds since the mid 80s. And this is Dewey on display for an appreciative crowd here in Orlando. Bloodhound. While hounds similar to bloodhounds were known throughout the Mediterranean region before the Christian era, they reached their modern form in England. This breed is the best known of the scent hounds. By nature, they are docile, but they exhibit a dogged determination, whether following a trail or living their daily lives. This is Bloodhound number 25. Yeah, and this is a very good Bloodhound. Number one Bloodhound, two-time national winner. This is Nathan. He is the number one hound dog in the country. He is number 10 all breeds, has over 18 best in shows this year. And again, throughout this competition this weekend, 17 of the top 20 ranked dogs are in attendance here at this AKC Yukonuba National Championship. The best of the best on display here, this great open event, over 4,000 dogs strong. Black and Tan Coon Hound. The Black and Tan Coon Hound's function is indicated by their name. They are serious when it comes to hunting. Once on the scent, they pursue the raccoon until it's treed and then announce their victory with loud bang. The breed originated in this country in the 1700s. They can be devoted hunting companions, asking only for fresh air and abundant exercise. This is Black and Tan Coon Hound number seven. And this is Baxter. Look at those long ears. <laughs> this breed is uniquely an American breed. It used to be known as the Virginia Black and Tan. This coonhound and all the coonhound breeds just require lots of exercise. They have tons of energy. They're built to hunt long periods of time. They have tons of stamina. American Foxhound. The American Foxhound resulted from crossing hounds from England and France. Their beginnings predate the existence of the United States and were influenced by owners like George Washington. American Foxhounds are lighter boned than their English cousins and are known for their ability to get along with each other and with other animals. This is American Foxhound number five. First of the Foxhounds we'll see, we'll see the English Foxhound a little bit later. This is Jake. This breed is very old in the United States. It was first registered with the American Kennel Club back in 1886. It is a very rare breed. It's supposed to have nice long legs to help it run long distances. And that white tip on the tail is so that when they're out in the field, you can see them rarely easily when they're in the brush. Get the sense, Jake. Love to get out in the brush, stretch his legs a little bit. Pharaoh Hound. As their name implies, the Pharaoh Hound originated with the pharaohs of Egyptian antiquity. Carried by traders to the island of Malta, they flourished and were eventually declared the national dog. 
When excited by the hunt or by happiness, this breed is known to blush, causing the nose and ears to flush to a deep rose. They hunt by sight or scent. This is Pharaoh Hound number 19. This is Jake, the number one pharaoh hound in the country for 2014. He's a dual champion, which means he's earned title out in the field as well as an AKC confirmation title. He's a very independent breed, and they only come in this one color, this beautiful chestnutty tan. And I apologize to Jake. I misnamed him in the previous dog. This is clearly Jake here, this, this pharaoh Jake. hound. <laughs> Jake, my apologies. He loves also lure coursing, which is a great AKC event for hounds. Plot Hound. The plot is named after a family of German immigrants who moved to America and brought the first representatives of the breed with them. A hunting hound of striking color, it traditionally brings big game to bay or tree. The plot is intelligent, alert, and confident. Noted for stamina, endurance, agility, and determination. The powerful, well-muscled, yet streamlined plot combines courage with athletic ability. This is Plot Hound number 11. Confident looking dog there, the plot. This is Vito. This is another American breed. It was bred to hunt raccoons. It's also very brave because it was expected also, if it needed to, to be able to bay a bear. Anything that squeaks, that's all right with Vito. That's his favorite toys. <laughs> Redbone Coonhound. Known for its flashy red coat, the Redbone Coonhound is a versatile worker, possessing the ability to hunt and swim over different terrains while maintaining speed and agility. The Redbone dates back to red foxhounds brought over by Scottish immigrants in the late 1700s. Redbones possess a natural training instinct and will track game ranging from raccoons to cougars. This is Redbone Coonhound number seven. Now this Redbone Coonhound certainly would like to chase after raccoons, but got some banana chips. <laughs> so if you look at his adorable face, you'll see that he has some gray grizzle to his muzzle, and that's because he is a retired show dog that just came out for this show. He's another winner from the veteran class. He is the number one red bone coon hound in the history of the breed. Being shown by his owner, Lori Mills. American English coon hound. Developed in the United States, the American English Coonhound is an avid hunter, renowned for its speed and endurance. These affectionate dogs require a good deal of exercise and make great companions for active owners. The breed is pleasant, alert, confident, and sociable with both humans and other dogs. This is American English Coonhound number five. This is Leo, the American English Coonhound. So this coloration we call the red tick. And you see it's, it's the little dapples of color everywhere. This is the most popular color combination for the American English Coonhound, which is also another new breed to AKC, first registered in 2001. <laughs> and he's happy. Love that. That's what they say he likes to do. <laughs> he likes to prance around sometimes in the ring, sometimes make a fool of his handler, but I think he's handling his business right now. He's doing just fine. He looks happy. Treeing Walker Coonhound. The treeing walker assists its owner in the hunt by treeing its quarry and announcing with its bark that it had been found. In fact, this coon hunting jargon is the basis of the present day idiom, barking up the wrong tree. Fast. With superb endurance, this breed has a white, black, and tan, short, glossy coat. The treeing walker is intelligent and sociable and will thrive with regular exercise. Before considering this breed for your household, be prepared for a voice loud enough to carry for miles. 
This is Treeing Walker Coonhound, number 18. And that's Fergie on display, one of the co-owners, Amanda Alexander, also handling tonight. Fergie is the number one treeing walker in the country, has won multiple groups, and the first female treeing walker to get a reserve best in show. Blue Tick Coonhound. The Blue Tick Coonhound gets its name from its coat pattern, which is dark blue in color and covered in a ticking or malted pattern. Owners prize this breed's skill in trailing and treeing raccoons and other small animals. This steady and determined breed can stay on the most intricate, intri intricate of tracks, making it a prized companion for active sporting families. This is Blue Tick Coonhound number 15. This is Rex, also listed as Sexy Rexy. And how about this? A junior handler overseeing Rex tonight, Jacqueline Smith. Love it. Jacqueline, 15-year-old junior handler. This coonhound, like all the coonhounds, are designed to run for a long, long time on a variety of terrains. And that's why they have those nice, long legs. English Foxhound. Fox hunting in England with horse and hound dates back hundreds of years, and the English Foxhound is a part of this long-standing tradition. Over 100 years ago, there were more than 140 recorded hound packs in England. This breed is still kept almost exclusively for hunting. This is English Foxhound number nine. English Foxhound, how about the name Windsor? <laughs> that works. Number one English Foxhound in the breed system. This is an older breed, registered first in 1909. And they're an easygoing breed. They are bred as to hunt in packs, so they get along well with other dogs. And like all the Foxhounds and Coonhounds, they do need a lot of exercise. Chris Eckerd with the handling duties here for Windsor. All these dogs. How does the judge start to whittle it down in his mind? There's still some to go. We'll see. <laughs> Norwegian Elkhound. Skeletal remains of dogs very similar to the Norwegian Elkhound have been found in Scandinavian archaeological digs dating back from the Stone Age. They were the peerless hunters of big game like the moose and the bear. They are compact and strong with a heavy double coat suited for the coldest of climates. This is Norwegian Elkhound number seven. This is a Spitz type breed. It was bred to hunt moose and hunt boar. They're very courageous. They were often owned by families that were in kind of isolated areas and they were expected not only to be hunters and herders but also guardians of the home. So they were very depended on by their families. This is Ben with the breeder, owner, handler, Lori Webster. Multiple group and specialty winner. Looking to see if they can add a national championship here tonight. Favorite food is a cheeseburger, by Harrier. the way. <laughs> Despite all stories related to ancient heritage, the Harrier is undoubtedly simply a smaller version of the Foxhound. Harriers were sometimes considered the poor man's Foxhound, a horse was not needed to pursue the harrier as it hunted, and the packs could be made up from the dogs of several owners. This breed remains one of the rarest of the hounds. This is Harrier number six. <laughs> Here's a look at Alto. Michael Walsh, one of the co-owners, leading this harrier. This is the number two owner handle series harrier the number one Harrier female for 2013. Favorite food, roast beef. Couldn't you blame him? Might be some of that coming up later on. For Special good treats for good behavior yeah. is always a plus. Especially for Alto. Whip it. Development of the Whippet took place in England within the last 200 years. They are a cross of small greyhounds with terrier breeds. 
later crossed with Italian greyhounds. Bred to race, they have been called the poor man's racehorse and are the fastest domestic animals of their size. But they are also quiet and well-behaved in the house, enjoying a warm spot near their master. This is Whippet number 24. Great view from the overhead there. And Michael Darty checking out this Whippet named Brazen. Now his, remember his first breed was a, a Whippet. Uh, Brazen is the number one sight hound, the number one Whippet in the country, number three hound overall. Shown by breeder owner handler Amanda Giles. Amanda, I've known my whole life. She's a third generation dog show participant. That whippet just wishes somebody had a frisbee to toss and go take a running leap. That is the favorite pastime of this dog, playing frisbee. It's a great way to get your dog exercise I mean, for almost any dog. What an athlete, those whippets. Basenji. The Basenji originated in Central Africa and has been around since the time of the pharaohs. They do not bark. When happy, they chortle or yodel. When sad, they wail. They are very fastidious breeds and sometimes clean themselves much like a cat. Known for their intelligence and playfulness, they do not tolerate being ignored. This is Basenji number 10. Saw those ears perked up. This is a very independent breed. They do need a lot of exercise. Uh, this, like, we say this is the barkless breed, but they, they're not mute. They still make a variety of sounds. You say like chortles and wails and things to alert you if things are going on, but they do not bark. Now, Anna here finished with three majors at 10 months old. She's so also newly qualified for lure coursing, so multifaceted dog. Petite Basset Griffon Vendion. A, little, a literal translation of this breed's name would be small, low to the ground, wire coated dog from the Vendian region of France. Petite Basset Griffon Vendion is commonly shortened to PBGV in the United States or to just petites. Used primarily to hunt rabbits and hares, this dog is an alert, bold, and intelligent hunter with great stamina. This is Petit Basset Griffon Vendion, number 33. You know, he has to have great stamina, <laughs> this dog that goes by the name of Mr. Wilson. His favorite thing he likes to do, one of them, running on a treadmill. <laughs> he loves it. He's got to have stamina. Yeah, they are a very outgoing breed. They're very active. They're always busy. They are very f they're fun to own. But they do have lots of stamina. You, I mean, you got to put them on the treadmill just to keep them <laughs> happy and sane. This is the number one PBGV in the country two years in a row. No incline, nice moderate speed. He'll get <laughs> it done. Basset hound. Basset hounds are characterized by their short legs. However, they are one of the heaviest boned dogs of any breed. Bassets originated in France in the Middle Ages and were bred to trail and flush a variety of game. As pets, they have a laid-back, easy-going style, and their low station are particular favorites of children. This is Basset Hound number 15. Wouldn't we all like to have the attitude and nature of the Basset Hound? Well, they are very sweet, mild, gentle-mannered dogs but are also bred to go all day out in the field. They have a lot of energy and stamina as well. They're very heavy boned, probably the heaviest boned small dog out there. I can't even call it a small dog, it's just a shorter dog. This one named Monkey, Nancy Pearson Handley. Number two all breed and Bassets. Yep. So it's so a low-legged scent hound, and those long, long ears help scoop up the scent when they put their head down to follow a trail. 15-inch beagle. 
Today, beagles are one of the most popular of the hound breeds. They are still used singly and in packs to hunt rabbits and routinely participate in field trials across the country. This is the 15-inch beagle, number 14. Well, Miss P there, couldn't see for a little bit. Ears cover there, covering the eyes. So that's a traditional way that beagles are presented. Uh, you just pull the ears forward. They can see the head and the neck. Will Alexander the handler <laughs> with those duties? This beagle has 19 best in shows, 91 group firsts, is the national specialty winner for 2014. Very accomplished beagle. This is a breed that definitely follows its nose. You don't want to let it off leash. And you have to expect it's going to gobble up everything that drops on the floor. Asking about fun tricks for Miss P. Listed here. Does barking count? 13-inch <laughs> beagle. Beagles come in two sizes. Under 13 inches at the withers and over 13 inches at the withers, but under 15 inches. Size is the only difference. This breed originated as a part of the packs of hounds used for scent hunting in England. The smaller ones were used and the, were the first beagles. This is the 13 inch beagle. This is 13 inch beagle number 16. This is Charlie, who loves to run, play, and snuggle with his owner. Another dog with a favorite toy, squeaky toy. So we saw two beagles. The only difference between the two and their standard is just the size. They're judged exactly by the same standard. Charlie is the number four 13 inch beagle in the country. Portuguese Podengo Pequino. Known for its small size, erect ears, and wedge shaped head, the Portuguese Podengo Pequino is bred to hunt in harsh terrains using sight, scent, and sound to catch their typical prey of rabbits. The breed, which comes in smooth and wire coat, is active, intelligent, and easily trained. Because of their instinct to chase, they should be kept on a leash or in a fenced yard. This is Portuguese Podengo Pequino, number 21. So the full name there, Radical de Viamante, just shortened to Radical, I believe. Howie Huber the third, the handler. One of the newer breeds to the American Kennel Club. They used to hunt rabbits, probably still can. I mean, they're supposed to be able to do what, you, what they're bred for, but they're adorable pets. They're very sweet. I love their scruffy little faces. Long-haired Dotson. The Dotson comes in two sizes and in three coat varieties. If they are 11 pounds or under at one year of age, they are considered miniature. If they are standard, they, are, they usually weigh between 16 and 32 pounds at maturity. The three coats are long-haired, smooth, and wire-haired. This is the long-haired Dotson, number 10. Well, always crowd favorites and favorites around the world. This is Marley, the long-haired Dotson. She is the number one female Dachshund in the country. She has won multiple best in specialty shows. It's a very courageous breed. And again, the first of three Dotsons that we'll see here. So yes, so we have two sizes and three varieties. You have standard and miniature. Smooth Dotson. Dotsons all are considered a single breed, regardless of their size or coat. However, they are shown in three variety classifications. The origins of the three are identical. The earliest dogs of this short-legged hound type were from Central Europe. Dotson type was then refined in Germany. This is the smooth Dotson number 50. 
little of the history of the process of separating these different sizes and styles. This is Boogie, the smooth Dotson. This is miniature Dachshund. And it's said that perhaps the miniature was created down from the standard to help combat a rabbit population in Germany in the 1800s. This is the number one mini dachshund in the breed. The 2013 National Miniature Dachshund Club winner. Wire-haired Dachshund. The origin of the word Dachshund in German means badger dog. They were bred to track and follow to ground animals that live underground, like the badger. They needed strength, stamina, and determination to take on such formidable opponents. Today's Dotsons retain these characteristics, but are primarily companions. This is the wire-haired Dotson number five. And this is Ducati, the number one wire Dotson breed and all breed. Number 11 hound. Just won his first best in show a few weekends ago. So he's on a roll. Yeah, he hopes. We'll see if it can continue. The last of the hound group. Decision time coming here for Michael Doherty. There are many dogs here to sort through. I do not envy him one bit. Pulled out the Saluki. <laughs> Abidzen Hound, Otter Hound, Blood Hound, American Fox Hound, Dream Walker, Norwegian Elk Hound. We have the Whippet, the PBGV, Beagle, and the Wirehair Dachshund. So there's the cut down. And now the final adjudication here. Another circle here, another look. A beast and hound. The otter hound. The number one hound dog in the country right now, the blood hound. It's the American fox hound. The Norwegian elk count. There goes the whippet. Crowd favorite, PBGV. Mr. Wilson making the rounds. The 15 inch beagle. Be Miss P. The wire hair dachshund. <laughs> and we're going to go again, fourth through first. Now, Judge Doherty will announce fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. 
the wonderful hound lineup. I thank you all very much. Wonderful presentation, excellent specimens, one and all. Fourth will be the PBGV. Third place will be the Whippet. Second place tonight will be the 15-inch Beagle. Hound group first goes to the Bloodhound. There we go. We have it. The number one hound in the country continues his reign. Winning the Hound group at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Well, Nathan is the winner of the Hound Group, the Bloodhound, number one, holding down that top ranking here in Orlando. The 15-inch Beagle, Miss P, there in second. Brazen, the Whippet, getting third. And Mr. Wilson in fourth spot. Mr. Doherty has chosen group first, the Bloodhound. Second, the 15-inch Beagle. Third, the Whippet. Fourth, the PBGV. Well, we've had some surprises on the night. But in this case, number one hound in the country defending his title. Nathan Heather Helmer, the handler. And her happy group of owners They'll be ready to talk about it coming up here when we return to Orlando. Few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Plenty of action still to come here from Orlando. The national owner handled finals. The sporting and the non-sporting groups. But in the hounds, the bloodhound, Nathan, deemed to be the best. And he and his handler and owners standing by with our Lindsay McCormick. Lindsay? Jason, Nathan continues to reign, and he looks like a pro right up here on the stand. Uh, there were 30 other dogs in this category. Why does he just continue to be so successful? You know, his overall balance, structure, movement, and he does have that little bit of charm with his stretching in the ring. Um, he just absolutely loves to show, 
and it shows off in the ring. As a bloodhound, what is a man-trailing dog? Uh, a man-trailing dog is a dog that can put a vest on, go out and find the lost, buy a scent article. Um, he does it. It's wonderful for our breed. Our breed really, truly enjoys to do it, and that's what they love. Do you ever notice any characteristics of that inside the home? Oh, yes. <laughs> they find everything. You can hide a toy and they find it. <laughs> so if you happen to lose an article of clothing, he's going to be able to find it? Uh, maybe. We'll work on that. <laughs> well, best of luck next year. And congrats, you guys. You. <laughs> Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, Heather Helmer, one of the co-owners and the handler tonight, they're joyous there. And you know what? They said that uh, Nathan needs his own kissing booth, loves to give kisses to everyone. They may have a round of smooches for him, the champion. After winning the Hound Group, 15-inch Beagle second, the Whippet third, and the PBGV there in fourth. So far on the evening, well, we have Rocket, the Shih Tzu, representing the Toy Group. And now Nathan the Bloodhound joining as the King of the Hounds for the night. They're advancing to that Best in Show lineup coming up to cap our coverage tomorrow night. With more action continuing here, the non-sporting and the sporting groups to come. And next, it's the Best National Owner Handled Finals. And that's when we return to the Orange County Convention Center here in Orlando, Florida. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. Amy works with kids with autism and developmental delays. And that's me, Sylvia. Amy got me free of charge from Canine Companions for Independence to be her assistant. Together we help improve kids' language skills, motor development, stuff like that. All they seem to want to do is laugh and give me hugs. To find out how you can help bring children with disabilities together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Unlike most superstars, they're modest. And very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now judge the best national owner handled finals. Our stewards for the national owner handled finals this evening are AKC Vice President Doug Lundgren and AKC Manager of Dog Show Rules and Programs, Ms. Bree Tazar. Please welcome from Destin, Florida, Judge Mrs. Charlotte P. Patterson. Can we please have the dogs of the national owner handled finals? So we have the sporting group, the Irish Setter, from the working group, the Alaskan Malamute, from the hound group, the Borzoi, 
From the herding group, the Border Collie. From the non-sporting group, Chinese Sharpei. From the Terrier group, the Norwich Terrier. And from the toy group, the Maltese. Charlotte P. Patterson from Destin, Florida, overlooking the competitors here. Seven groups Let's in this category as well. Please, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Just make one big circle for me, please, all around together. Just go all the way around. Yes, together. She's going to start by just taking them all around once, and then she'll start her examination. Now the group winners all advancing to the final. Dogs ranked in the top 10 plus ties of their breed at the end of the qualifying period this year, making it to Orlando based on the season standings in this national owner handled series. Essentially, just like it is in other sports, good enough in the regular season, you make it here to the playoffs. Absolutely right. From the sporting group, the Irish setter number five. So all of the dogs in this group are shown back, by their owners. And so unlike in traditional regular groups where you'll have owners and professionals competing against each other, this competition is strictly to celebrate those people who show their own dogs, to give them the spotlight. You could say amateurs, but in what they do and the commitment and level, it is a life and a livelihood for these folks, too. Well, it's a lifelong commitment. Right it's uh, not necessarily a livelihood, but it's a, it's a passion. And uh, most of these people have been in the sport for many years. And in some of our competitions, those breeds, there are some breeds that are predominantly run by professionals or shown by professionals. He says it's hot in here. It hot in <laughs> From the working group, Alaskan Malamute, number nine. Okay, sweetie, right down and back for me, please. Her and Charlotte Patterson, the judge, talking about the heat there. Certainly maybe a little warm for that Alaskan Malamute. Under the lights, it is uh, a lot warmer than you'd think, and so... This is a coated breed, it's bred to be in the Arctic, so the hot lights are gonna make them a little warm. Now right around for me, please. He is thinking, first of all, you brought me to Florida, and <laughs> now you stuck me under these lights? <laughs> Seems to be doing okay. From the Hound Group, the Borzoi, number 27. This is the first time we've had the right National back, Owner please. Handled Series on the live stream, in the big ring. And we did it because we wanted to really celebrate and showcase this competition. It's a relatively new competition to the American Kennel Club. And uh, it's held, it doesn't have to be held at every dog show, but you can elect to hold it at almost every dog show in the country. And it gives owners really a second time during the day to compete because they can compete in their regular best of breed Take classes right and then in the owner handled series. From the herding group, the Border Collie, number 33.
good looking border collie. Turning back for me now. It's such an active and alert breed. Such high energy. Are we around for me, please? In the herding groups, one of the groups we'll see in the overall competition tomorrow night. Right. Along with the working group and the terrier group. And of course, best in show. <laughs> can't, can't forget best in show. Show me the bite and the mouth. From the non-sporting group, the Chinese Sharpay, number 20. Okay, take her right down and back for me, please. <laughs> Thank you. Now, right around for me, please. Thank, Thank you. Good look at that. Chinese Sharpay, and now the table coming out for our next competitor. <laughs> From the Terrier group, hot? the Norwich <laughs> Terrier, number nine. Okay, Sudi, right over here. How much does that interaction please, between no. judge, me, to the handler at that point? Are you, are you nervous and not even hearing <laughs> what she's saying? Well, you know, it's nice to, to, if it relaxes you, that's great. Um, it's nice to hear something from the judge, whether it's just hello or congratulations or nice to see you. Thank you. Now right around. Well, most of these people compete week in and week out, and so though they may not know the judge personally, they possibly have shown to the judge before, and it's not the first time they've ever se seen her. From the toy group, the Maltese, number eight. It's all part of that formal name tropical breeze you imagine the Maltese sitting there with the wind blowing around that mane in the tropical breeze and a beautiful flowing coat that's for sure now right around for me please and the brush at the ready <laughs> not needing it right now though <laughs> keep it in your pocket at all times though when you have a coat like that Bravo for all of you. <laughs> it says bravo for all of you, which is absolutely right. Charlie Patterson from Destin, Florida, calling out some assistance and ready to make the award. As an owner handler myself, I know how hard you work. I know all those miles you drive and all those puppies you've whelped and all, every show you go to hoping to win. I congratulate you all for the competition you've been through all year. And especially today, I wish I could give every one of you a ribbon. I know you hate to hear that, but today's winner is the Maltese. There we have it, the Maltese from the toy group, the winner of the National Owner Handled Series Final. Very happy lady. And that's not a one-show win. That is qualifying throughout the entire year, having success and being the best of the best here to break through and win that championship. Just hasn't been a one-shot event. That's right. It's the culmination of a year's long effort. Consistency. Judge Patterson has selected the Maltese as the best national owner handled dog in show. What a thrill, and another winner crowned here 
in Orlando at the American Kennel Club, Yukonuba National Championship. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My buddy Tommy is an artist, and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling, sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> The night continues here in Orlando. And what a scene so far with some award winners in their groups and getting closer to the sporting and non-sporting categories. What we've seen so far, the National Owner Handler Series, the Maltese and her owner standing by with Lindsay. Jason, Sandy walked backstage and the entire place just lit up because she's beaming right now. <laughs> How long have you been showing dogs? Oh, since early 90s, early 90s. Do you have any plans to go pro? Oh, no. Oh, oh no. That's too tough. It's, it's way too tough. But it's so much fun to be an owner handler and go and um, talk to new people, new breeders, new owners, new exhibitors, and learn their life stories. It's, it's wonderful. Why this particular competition? Why not? I support the owner handler. And I support the shows that, that carried that series along the way this year. So this was just the crowning glory. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, Jason. Lindsay, thank you very much. Uh, certainly a very gracious and excited owner, champion of the best national owner handle finals here. Again, that season of great success rewarded with that championship. Another Ace Award presentation when we return here in a moment. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy. I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK.
beyond the pedigrees, beyond the competition, beyond the trophies. There are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people. Who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 50% off select dog and cat beds. Plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the ring are AKC board member Patricia M. Cruz and tonight's third ACE recipient. In the category of Uniform Services Canine, we have Bruno, a German Shepherd dog, and his owner, Officer R.J. Young of the Anaheim, California Police Department Canine Unit. I'm here with Bruno and Officer R.J. Young who are this year's Uniform Services K-9 ACE Award honoree. Tell me a little bit about March 20th. Um, so it kind of started out like any other day. Um, we were logging on. Um, we work a cover shift in the city. And um, as soon as we logged on and started turning on the radio, um, you could tell kind of all hell was breaking loose. So they uh, had called in the SWAT team. Me and Bruno were attached to the SWAT team as one of, the, as one of two SWAT K-9s. So uh, we got suited up and um, we had, they had a, an area surround, uh, contained for the suspect. Bruno located the suspect um, uh, <clears throat> at the time that Bruno located him and began to alert to us that he had located the suspect. Um, he opened fire in the directions of uh, myself and three other officers and uh, Bruno was between us and he actually took the bullet. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that uh, he, it, it, the bullet that he took uh, for would, have, would have ended up at an officer had he not been there. So he definitely saved the lives of myself and, and three other officers that day without a doubt. What was going through your mind when you find, found out that you guys won the ACE Award? Actually, it was a complete shock to me. I had no idea we were even nominated. It's a, a great honor. I mean, there's, you know, and, and it's kind of hard because I kind of think, well, you know, this happens to a lot of, of police dogs. I mean, there's police dogs that are hurt and injured and are, are still out there doing the job. And, um, so it's kind of like, you know, why us? But uh, it's, it's a huge, huge honor. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2014 American Kennel Club Humane Fund Ace Award Uniform Services Canine Recipient, Bruno. And the crowd honoring that duo from Anaheim, California. R.J. Young of the Anaheim Police Department and Bruno as well. Another ACE Award winner here tonight. Well, more action to come here for the 2014 AKC Ukanuba National Dog Show. We'll take the plunge coming up. superstars, they're modest, and very few of them have shoe commercials. But when it comes to competitive fire and intensity, the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. 
Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Well, here in Orlando, it's not just about the quest for best in show. We've got agility competitions, obedience competitions, and something called dock diving. Dogs maybe taking a leap of faith or leap of fur. here at the dock diving competition. This is the first year that the AKC has recognized the dock diving competition. There's two different types. There's distance jumping and there's air retrieve. In the distance jumping, once the dog enters the water, he's measured from his tail. And in air retrieve, a toy is lifted above the water and the dog will jump and hit it. In fact, this weekend, the world record was set for air retrieve. It's 24 feet and six inches. And if you think this looks like fun and your dog can, has a shot, then come out here, give it a try. We have everyone from Chihuahuas to Great Danes. Uh, certainly some dogs getting the chance to get a quest, to get an otter, and get a little splashdown as well. Non-sporting group, stick around for that. Coming up. It's the look on your face And your pining embrace That say we'll be together again Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp. So they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. This is the Duracell PowerMat Go Power Kit. It includes a power mat and a power case. They help make sure your iPhone 5 or 5S is always charged and protected. The power case is powerful enough to give you up to 100% extra battery power, protective enough to shield your iPhone from nicks and bruises, and sleek enough that you won't notice it's there until you need it. The power mat makes recharging effortless. Instead of looking around for a cable, simply set your case down and you're charging wirelessly. So how does it work? Well. The power case comes with a built-in 2,000 milliamp rechargeable battery that gives you up to 100% extra power and 8 hours added talk time. Just slide your iPhone into the case and charge anywhere at the press of a button. The four LED lights indicate the level of battery charge of your backup battery. To recharge your iPhone and power case, place it on the center of your power mat. The power mat charges as quickly as a typical wall outlet, and it's smart too. It will fully charge your iPhone first and only then start charging the backup battery in your power case. When you're away from a power mat, you can also recharge your iPhone and power case via regular micro USB cable. Leave your iPhone charging overnight and you'll wake up to the great feeling of having up to 200% battery power to last you throughout the day. Visit DuracellPowerMat.com for more information and to bring the power home to your iPhone. Well, the countdown, the best in show, will be crowned tomorrow night, is on. Shih Tzu, Rocket winning 
that toy group, and then Nathan, the top bloodhound of the country, defending his crown as the number one hound as well. Those two were on through to the final seven in the quest for best in show. The non-sporting group is coming up here. And glad to have you with us for this group and throughout the night. Jason Knapp here with Gina DiNardo. Also glad to have Andrew Brace, great judge, to give us some insight here into the non-sporting group. Andrew, what can we look for some of the characteristics of this group? Well, in the non-sporting group, you know, you have a wide cross-section of different, different breeds that are fundamentally sort of um, utility kind of breeds. Great companions, great characters, huge variety, some more glamorous than the others, but... Um, Always a lot of very, very competitive breeds in, in, in this group. Should be good. Jeannie, you ready to go? I can't wait. Let's go. Well, we look at some of the things here dating back to the late 1800s. And again, these non-sporting dogs, great companions as well. We're ready to start this competition. And our public address announcer, Jeff Michaels, standing by here at the ready. It's time for the non-sporting group. Please welcome from Clinton, New Jersey, Mrs. Elaine J. Lessig. Our steward for the non-sporting group this evening is AKC board, Mr. Lee Arnold. May we have the non-sporting group, please. Well, the parade has begun as they work their way here into the ring. 21 dogs in the non-sporting group, a variety of sizes, shapes, coat types. Originally in America, groups were divided just between sporting and non-sporting groups. Uh, and then as the, we brought more dogs in, we evolved into the seven groups that we have today. And in Europe and the other FCI countries, you have 10 groups. Right. So in the UK and the USA, we get off quite lightly. <laughs> this is a competitive group. Very. Always is. Mrs. Lessig from New Jersey. She's a Cavalier breeder herself. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she's, I was talking to her earlier, and she's, she's really looking forward to this group. Mm -hmm. and she's obviously giving them all a very, very thorough look. Most of these breeds I'm familiar with, Gina, but the, um, you're going to have to help me out a little bit later on American Eskimos, yes. because that's a breed that we've yet <laughs> to discover in the UK. No problem. I got it covered. Mm -hmm. Andrew, will you brush up a little bit as you get ready to kind of oversee a group? Will you kind of brush up a little bit on what you're well, looking every, for? Well, every, every breed is judged ag against a written description of, of the, um, the, the blueprint of the breed, which we refer to as the breed standards. And um. Dalmatian. The picturesque Dalmatian slick white coat, which is decorated with jet black or liver brown spots, looks like no other breed. While Dalmatians have been used as dogs of war, sentinels, draft yeah. dogs, shepherds, you sporting dogs, and stage performers, they are best known as coach dogs and firehouse mascots. This is Dalmatian number 11. So this is Dalmatian Odie being shown by Michael Scott, professional handler. Okay, let's take him right around, please. Dalmatian is one of those breeds bred with great endurance and stamina, high energy breed. Yeah, the fire station dog. Do you recognize this black dog? I don't, so tell me. You Standard Poodle. Undoubtedly, Poodles originated as water retrievers. 
They come in three sizes, and the large or standard poodle gains special fame as a water worker. Poodles have enjoyed universal esteem, which is attested by their variation in size and color. They possess innate intelligence, and their ability to learn is exceptional. This is standard poodle number 15. We sat here last year, Gina. He had a different handler. You see in the do world you remember challenge? him winning the Yukonuba World yes, Challenge? Yes, now I do. Thank you very much. Then he went on to win Best in Show at Crufts. He's now living in Peru. And, and he's, he's here in Florida. And he's, <laughs> and he's back in Florida. The, 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 take him right around. the venue for his great victory last year. And he's, I watched Standard Poodles uh, in, in the breed ring earlier. Very competitive. It was a very competitive breed today. Oh, yes. yeah. yeah. There were some great standards. And, uh, and Ricky... Ricky came back to Orlando and uh, pulled off the breed under Kathleen Colbert. Congratulations on your win for the first time. Sholo Etz Quintly. The Sholo is one of the world's oldest and rarest breeds. In its native Mexico, it is still considered to be a healer in remote villages. Today, this breed serves as a guard and companion. They come in toy, miniature, and standard sizes and can be hairless or coated. Typical Sholo temperament is calm, tranquil, aloof, and attentive. They make excellent companion dogs with moderate exercise and grooming needs. This is Sholo at Squint Lee, number 17. Thank you, ma'am. Right on around for me, This please. is Armani, the top winning Sholo of all time, and the number five non-sporting dog currently. Fascinating hairless breed, and you have three sizes, yeah? Correct. All shown together. Correct. May I please see his bite and his tongue? Thank you, and congratulations on your win today. Thank you, sir. Halfway down the back, please. Chinese Sharpei. The Chinese Sharpei is an ancient breed that has existed for centuries in the southern provinces of China. Sharpei translates roughly into sandpaper-like coat, a unique coat in the dog world, along with a hippopotamus muzzle. They possess Thank loose you, skin right and wrinkles the over me, the please. head, neck, and withers. Sharpei are regal and lordly while being extremely devoted to their family. This is Chinese Sharpei number 33. This dog was winner's dog and the grand Futurity winner in 2014 at its national Congratulations specialty. Congratulations on your win today. Finnish Spitz. Finnish Spitz, which present a fox-like appearance, have long been used to hunt small game and birds. Though they, they are primarily house dogs and faithful companions, this red Thank gold sir, dog is back. the national dog of Finland, where they still work as national bark pointers. They direct hunters to the location of treed game with a distinctive ringing bark or yodel and point at the game as the hunter approaches. This is Finnish Spitz, number nine. Interestingly, Gina, you probably wouldn't have known this, but this Finnish Spitz was actually bred in the UK. No. This is Kuniakas Wizbang, who was I actually in 2011 the top UK puppy in the breed. So what is Puppy of the Year? We don't have Puppy of the Year. No, no, he's the top winning oh, fin Finnish Spitz over, over, you know, from the time he was six months until he was 12 months. Got it. Congratulations on a lovely day. Keys Hound. The Keys Hound, the national dog of Holland, is a hardy breed possessing a double coat and fox-like expression. A unique characteristic of this breed are spectacle-like markings that help give them in an inquisitive ex expression. A sensible okay, watchdog and an back. ideal family companion, Keys Hound serve as barge dogs on small vessels that were found in great numbers on the Rhine River. This is Keys Hound number 27. This is Cubit, and Cubit is having quite the year. Yes, seven best in shows, eight best in specialty shows. He is the best of breed winner in his national specialty, the number one dog in the breed, and a top five non-sporting dog. And this, this is one of many breeds oh, where the, the British breed, as you know, in recent years have benefited from American imports. Um, we've seen some very significant Kazons coming into the UK that, that, have, that have done very well in the ring and then gone on to produce. Great, in, you know, the, 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 the cooperation between breeders increases all the time. Congratulations on a nice day. May you, would you please show me his bite? Chow Chow. 
Chow Chows were first bred in northern China more than 2,000 years ago to hunt, herd, and protect the home. They are serious, dignified, and proud. Because of their background as one of hard work and little fun with humans, they can seem aloof. The breed comes in two coat types, rough Great. and smooth. Yeah, fly, the blue-black tongue is one of the Chow's most distinguishing features. This is Chow Chow number five. This is pilot Michael Brantley, the handler. This is the number one Chow in 2014. He's had two all-breed best in shows, nine group firsts. Very distinctive movement on the Chow Chows, Gina. Always remember that and they move right with a rather a stilted rear action because they don't have as much angulation behind as a lot of the more generic breeds. And that very distinctive skull that gives them that sort of leonine expression. Tibetan Terrier. Bred to be companions, Tibetan Terriers are happy, outgoing dogs who were considered family members in their native Tibet. Tibetan Terriers are actually not Terriers. They are called by that name because of their size and because Western countries preferred it to their Tibetan names of Luckbringer and Holy Dog. Their coat, which is long and shaggy, may be straight or wavy and of any color. TTs are extremely agile and usually rather quiet. This is Tibetan Terrier number 11. So this is Axel, a multiple group winning Tibetan Terrier. He's number three, all breed, number two in his breed. Thank you, sir. Right on the ramp for me, please. You know, it's hard to believe when you actually look at the two breeds today that when they first came into the UK, the Tibetan Terrier and the Lhasa Rapsa were all basically lumped into one because they've developed quite in quite different directions. Have a lovely day. Shiba Inu. Shiba Inu have been favorites with the Japanese for centuries. They are considered to be the smallest and oldest of Japan's dogs. Their keen <laughs> senses and ability to maneuver through steep hills and mountain slopes have repeatedly shown the Shiba to be a superb hunting dog. This okay, is Shiba Inu number 85. Sherry Sulo is the owner handler of Kuma. One of the Japanese breeds with a very individual character, the Shiba Inu, Thanks and a so very, much. very exquisite expression. I love their faces. Mm, they just, when, when they do have that one wonderfully set and shaped eye, there's nothing like a mm -hmm. the, the classic Shiba expression. Congratulations on your win. Miniature Poodle. Sweetie. The Miniature Poodle has the same fine qualities of the standard Poodle. They are used for sending and digging up truffle an edible fungus considered to be a great delicacy. The unique coat of the poodle consists of a profuse top coat, wiry in texture, and composed of thick, close curls. The undercoat is woolly and warm. This is the miniature poodle, number 11. We've been talking about top-ranked dogs here throughout the night. This is the number one miniature poodle here in 2014. Of course, in the States, just like the UK, you have three sizes of poodle. Mm -hmm. Europe and the other FCI countries, they actually have four. What's the fourth? They have a toy, a dwarf, a miniature, That's and a standard, with right. the dwarf being some way between the toy and the mini. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Kazo Saka, owner and handler of this dog. Very, very successful. Famous very yes. successful yes. handler, of handler of poodles. Congratulations, sir. How are you doing? American Eskimo Dog. The American Eskimo Dog is one of the Nordic breeds and is nicknamed the Eski. Their sparkling white coat has great crowd appeal, okay, which made them extremely that. popular for use in dog acts in circuses. A loving companion, the Eski possesses innate intelligence, unsurpassed agility, and is highly trainable. This is American Eskimo Dog number 19. Well, if you like watching movies, in particular Turner Classic movies, Inuk is your companion. His owner says, loves watching those old classics together. <laughs> Both a Canadian and American champion, 14 Aubrey Best in Shows. Congratulations on a lovely day. Lo Chen. 
The earliest evidence of the Lo Chen traces to the 1400s in Germany and Holland. Besides written references, the breed can be found in artwork dating back to medieval times. The Lo Chen has enjoyed popularity for many centuries as a companion dog of the ruling and middle class alike. They got their name from their trim, not for possessing a fierce lion-like personality. Lo Chen are small, happy, and lively dogs who love to be a part of their owner's lives. This is Lo Chen number 11. I can never quite understand why you have the Lurchin in, in the toy group, in the non-sporting group in the States, because we have them as toys, as indeed we do with, with the Pichons. <laughs> because they're, you know, they are essentially toy dogs. I'm sure there's some, there's some there's very some valid reason, reason in, the, in, <laughs> in the history of the breed, Gina. We're going to have to look that up. I can be a little up. research I'm for you there. We're going to look that up. Bichon Frise. The Bichon Frise is one of many breeds originating from the Mediterranean area. They are a small, sturdy, white powder puff of a dog, possessing a merry temperament and an inquisitive expression. Bichons are dogs of great appeal and throughout the centuries were favored pets of royalty in various European countries. This is Bichon Frise, number 15. Relatives of mine have four Bichons. They are a hoot. This is the number Thank one Bichon Frise in the country, the number three non-sporting dog, with 20 best in shows to date. And don't I remember Scott Summer going best in show at Westminster some years ago? Yes, with, with, JR, with the Bichon, the, the Bichon famous JR. JR. That's right. Lhasa Apso. The heavily coated Lhasa Apso has its origins in Tibet a country of huge mountains and deep valleys with intense cold and heat. Lhasa Apsos were kept as special guards inside of monasteries and dwellings because of their intelligence, acute hearing, and uncanny ability to, to distinguish friend from foe. This is Lhasa Apso number 23. This calf weighs great. This is Gabriel, who's been rated in the top 10 of the breed. Thank you, ma'am. Right on around for me, please. This breed acted as sentinels in Tibet. Yeah, they're uh, th like so many of the, the Asian breeds. They have a certain a aloofness mm -hmm. about them. But once once they like you, they're your friend for life. Absolutely. <laughs> Skipper Key. Skipper Keys, whose name means little captain in Flemish, were popular companions on canal boats where they served as guardians. The general appearance of Skipper Keys is distinctive due to their black, short, thick-set bodies and fox-like heads. Skips are very fond of children and are devoted to their charges. This is Skipper Key number 11. This is Smokey. This is a very energetic, cobby little breed. They have a very interesting coat pattern, right? While they're all black, their hair in different places is different shapes, different, t I mean, different sizes, different textures. Thank you, right on around for me. And of course, we also have cream skip case. We don't. You don't, you don't <laughs> recognize, you, black, don't recognize yeah, I mean, you don't yeah. recognize the cream, I know. Congratulations. Tibetan Spaniel. The Tibetan Spaniel has existed for thousands of years in Tibet and China and holds an important position in Tibetan culture. Tibbies are intelligent and loving. They are not lap dogs, even though they are small. They are brave watchdogs and like to take walks and play. Tibetan Spaniels get along well with other animals, especially other dogs. This is Tibetan Spaniel number eight. You know, dog people are very versatile, aren't they, Gina? This young man handling the Tibet the Spaniel. I spent last Saturday watching him judge a boxer specialty in the middle of England. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. He, he shows a lot of different breeds. Uh, box, boxers are his boxers, first love. He was, his, his parents yeah, had boxers many yeah. years ago in Argentina. And he did a jolly good job, too, I might say. But Tibetan Spaniels, one of his breeds, he also shows Tibetan Mastiffs, mm -hmm. I think. So. Absolutely. Congratulations on your Caton de Tulia. 
The breed originated on the island of Madagascar and was owned only by noblemen. Catans are small, sweet dogs with a lot of heart. They thrive on human companionship and make loyal family pets. They get along well with children as well as other dogs. Their long cotton-like coat requires regular brushing. This is Caton de Tillier, number 23. Saw that registered name, including incredible hunk, a hunk, shortened to hunky. And an American champion won that title at the tender age of eight months. Shown tonight by Ernesto Lara. Another, another Westminster Best in Show winner. Yes, with the Afton Pincher. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the new breed for us at AKC this Cotone, year. Cocon de Tillia, yeah. The, the coat texture of this breed is very, very important. Thank I mean, it's, so it's a big part of its name. And, and it should be cotton-like. Absolutely, yes, yes. yes. The, you know, the very, very distinctive coat. Slightly different outline from a lot of breeds that, that, that are generally of that shape. Good and pigment. Always white. Mm. Always white. In always our white. It, yes. Exactly. Always white. Even, in the, Even in the UK. Even in the UK? Just yep. checking. <laughs> French Bulldog. Bred principally as pets and companions, French Bulldogs are remarkably intelligent and make good watchdogs. They have distinctive bad ears, a feature that accentuates the individuality of this breed. As a rule, Frenchies are affectionate, playful, and sweet-tempered. This is French Bulldog number six. This is Frida, the number one French Bulldog female. Has over 21 group firsts. These, you know, this is such a cute breed, and they are clowns. They have so much character. So much personality. They're small dogs, but huge, huge characters. They can be stubborn, they can be get entertaining, they can be clowns, they can be guard dogs. Yes, they thank can, you so much. They, I mean, they really are. They have all, all things to all men, Frenchies. Mm -hmm. And the people who have them, once they have French Bulldogs, they never, ever, mm -hmm. they never desert the breed. They are super popular. Absolutely. Frenchies for life. Totally. Congratulations <laughs> on your win today. How nice. A sweet girl. Boston yeah. Terrier. Boston Terriers are one of the few breeds to originate in the United States. The prominent markings of this breed are a distinctive feature, and Bostons are lovingly referred to as Tuxedo Dog. They have a characteristically gentle disposition that won them the name of American Gentleman. Bostons are lively, highly intelligent companions. This is Boston Terrier number 42. Well, the one they call Giggles has his serious face on right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's an adorable name. That's Giggles. Yeah, this is the first American breed to be recognized by the American Kennel Club back in 1893. They are fabulous, fabulous breed. And such a smart breed. Mm -hmm. Such a smart breed. And, I mean, still, I think that, you know, that obviously, America, this, this is where the breed originated and probably where you still find the best best mm -hmm. Bostons, I think. Bulldog. The Bulldog of today represents over a century of dedicated breeding. Originally used in connection with bull baiting, Bulldogs faced extinction in the 1800s when dog fighting as a sport became illegal in England. To preserve the breed, it was necessary to breed out aggressiveness while retaining the courage and tenacity so much admired in this breed. This is Bulldog number 19. And this is the final competitor of the evening in the non-sporting group, the Bulldog, named Don Juan. He's the number one Bulldog all, Bulldog all Systems in the United States. Two best in shows this year. You know, when I first came to the States to judge Bulldogs, I was so impressed by the <laughs> fact that you allowed Bulldogs to go on the ramp. <laughs> because at home when you do 200 Bulldogs, your back is solid. Rest. You can't move for a week. But get this. Croft's Dog Show in March this year. For the first time ever, the Bulldog Ring are having the ramp trial. You see what you Americans mm -hmm. do, You're we do in us. 10 I years' love time. That. <laughs> well, this is new for us that we're seeing them, you know, re relatively new seeing the ramp used in the group rings. It's very, very practical. It's a great help to the exhibitors. Absolutely. It's, it's a great help to the judges. And I love the way the dogs just rush They're up so to get well on it. They're so now to get up on the ramp. See, Don Juan just got a little air there. I think he was showing off for the ladies. <laughs> He's adorable. <laughs> Elaine's doing this very thoughtfully. Yeah. I know she's thrilled to do this assignment. Oh, as she, uh, as she, she should be. Oh, 
first we're pulling out the Dalmatian. Standard poodle, please. There's the Dalmatian, the standard poodle and the keys, coming please. out. The keys, on. She's pulling out some good ones. Mm -hmm. May I have the Bichon, please? The Bichon. May I have the Tibetan Spaniel, please? Comes the, the French Spanish Bulldog and the, French and the Bulldog. And the Bulldog. That's a, that's a neat shortlist. Ooh, no. <laughs> now what? <laughs> I'm, I must not <laughs> get as stupid as I did in the World Challenge over the standard poodle. I must exert some self-control. <laughs> must be non -partisan. I know he's living in <laughs> Peru now, but we still think of him as British. I mean, Mike Scott has had some fabulous Dalmatians mm -hmm. over the years, hasn't he? Yes. And there's Ricky, the, the standard poodle. He lives um, He lives in the family of Sarpe, you know. There's the Down in Peru. The Kazon, the Dutch barge dog, with the very distinctive spectacles. Mm -hmm. The Bichon Frise. Look at those round, big black eyes. That's mm -hmm. And the, the Tibetan Spaniel with Diego. Not in there with the boxer, but with mm -hmm. one of his Tibetan breeds. And the, the Frenchie, the fawn Frenchie. She's got a wonderful expression yep. that bitch, hasn't she? And the British Bulldog. The Bulldog. <laughs> a, a bulldog, yes, yes. No, I wonder where the he lays. Number one bulldog. Going. Oh God, I think she's. Oh, she's I think, decided. I think sh How do you like us doing four three two one this year? Wow, you know it's against now all judge the rules. Leslie we will announce to do it, four but you know I, I'm place. used to doing it in Scotland. We begin with I think fourth it makes place. It exciting, don't you? Yes, yes. May I please have the keys? Congratulations to you. What a lovely win. Thank you. For group three, ma three, may I please have the French Bulldog? Thank you. For group two tonight, may I please have the Tibetan Spaniel? And what a pleasure to award Group one to our standard poodle. Oh! Oh, there we go. Oh. Ricky did it again. <laughs> OMG. <laughs> Ricky the standard poodle, the English bred, half Spanish bred, now living in Peru. International man of mystery. <laughs> oh boy, what a fantastic win. Well, doesn't that standard poodle look like a jet setter oh, all around the world? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, since he's been, he, he, he actually went with his new owner, Ilaria Bondi, from the Poodle Club of America. Mm -hmm. He was shown at the Poodle Club of America. He's won several best in shows since he's been in Peru. And. Um, well, this this is this is amazing. I mean, he won the World Challenge last year, and now he's the winner of and the non-sporting group. He's won the non-sporting group. It's it's very exciting. There are going to be a couple of very excited breeders back home <laughs> in Blackpool. Well, the standard poodle winning here in the non-sporting group. Back to talk more about it in Orlando in a moment. More than 390,000 reunions with lost pets. Thousands of kennel inspections each year. More than $21 million for canine health research. The American Kennel Club. We make all this possible because you make us possible. Register your dog with the only U.S. registry that matters. Find a puppy. Visit akc.org. Riding the trails of the Alpine Timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. My buddy Tommy is an artist, and I'm his assistant, Hailey. Actually, I've been helping Tommy with a lot of things since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence. I help him get around, reach things he can't get to, keep him smiling. Sometimes I'm even his paintbrush. 
To find out how you can help bring people like Tommy together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. <coughs> The night continues here in Orlando. The week continues as we get ready to crown a champion in the best of show tomorrow night. But so far, three of those seven finalists are decided. And the latest in the non-sporting group. And Lindsay is standing by with more. Lindsay? What an exciting night for you guys, Gino. Tell me about this grooming process that took place to get to tonight. Wow. Um it's a long process. Uh, I'm so happy, and uh, I'm work the last day, and uh, all day, and uh, today too. And uh, the dog is a good dog. How many hours total do you think was spent grooming? Um, today I'm I'm doing uh, six hours, maybe maybe more, and uh, I think is is great. And you personally did all of this. Yes, yes, I'm doing everything about him. This dog travels all over the world, more so than I. I mean, what type of frequent flyer miles does he have? I'm, I'm sorry. He, he, he spends a lot of time on airplanes. Yes. More so than your average American. How do, is he on airplanes? No, uh, he, he, he don't have a problem. He's a, a good dog, and uh, when I put him the, in the crate, and he sleep. He don't have a problem. He's a good dog. So he's used to it. Yes, he's my baby. Well, congratulations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Jason. Well, that's Standard Poodle racking up a lot of miles and a lot of wins. The latest here in the non-sporting group will have the chance to win Best in Show. We'll see tomorrow night, but certainly on this night, winning that non-sporting group. The Tibetan Spaniel taking second, the French Bulldog third, and the Kishan there in fourth. And again, three of those seven spots decided. Uh, the toy winner, the hound winner, the non-sporting winner. And the sporting to be decided tonight, herding, terrier, and working groups will all be Coming up tomorrow night here as we continue our coverage of the AKC Yukonuba National Championship from Orlando. More exciting action when we return the sporting group. Stick around for that as they get ready to hit the floor and strut their stuff in just a bit. Dogs of the Mountain Watch, dogs like Rio, have to be sharp, so they start young and stay fueled with Yukonuba. Our formula, which contains DHA, works naturally with dogs' bodies to speed up reaction time and help puppies become smarter and more trainable. So these dogs grow into the mountain's great guardians. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my best friend, Maria. And that's me, Jared. Maria is deaf, so I'm not just her buddy, I'm also her ears. Ever since we were teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, I've been letting her know when food's done in the microwave, when a friend is calling her name, or when the doorbell rings. But the one sound I like most of all is Maria laughing. She does a lot of that these days. To find out how you can help bring people like Maria together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. Beyond the pedigrees, beyond the competition, beyond the trophies, there are people who love dogs almost as much as dogs love people. 
who look after them the way they look after us. Because what is at the heart of the American Kennel Club is a passion and an unwavering concern for the purebred dog. If you share that passion, visit us at akc.org. This holiday season, remember to give back to your companions. Petco can help with thousands of gifts on sale, including 50% off select dog and cat pets. Plus earn 5% back with Pals Rewards. Joy, love, pets. Petco. The AKC Yukonuba National Championship brought to you in part by Bouncy, the quicker picker-upper. The night is not complete yet here at the Orange County Convention Center in Central Florida, Orlando to be exact. The sporting group on the way here as coverage continues to the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Jason Knapp here with Gina DiNardo and Doug Lundgren, the AKC Vice President for Sports and Events is with us. Doug, thanks for taking the time out. Talk a little bit about this sporting group. What can we see from this group of dogs? Well, we're going to see 29 dogs in the sporting group. Uh, they're all made as hunting dogs or developed to be hunting dogs for upland game birds or waterfowl. In general, you could say the group is made up of three types, the pointing breeds, the retrieving breeds, and the flushing breeds. Looking at some of those dogs backstage as they get ready to go. And Gina, some of this group, certainly some other things to focus on when we get ready to look at these dogs. Well... I'll let Doug answer. He's the expert. Well, very athletic dogs. Uh, they all are working in the field, so they have to be kind of rugged, athletic, cover a lot of ground, have some endurance. You know, Jeff Michaels, our public address announcer, ready to bring them in. Jeff, take it away. Now it's time for the sporting group. Please welcome from Fort Worth, Texas, Mr. Ed Embry Vivin. Our stewards for the sporting group this evening is AKC board member, Mr. Robert A. Amen. May we have the sporting group, please. dogs in this group. Some of America's most favorite breeds, the Lab and the Golden Retriever, which are always in the top registrations at AKC, are in this group, along with some other very popular breeds, English Springer Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels. The waiting game for this group of animals and their handlers, how difficult is it to go last among the groups tonight? It's a long day for these dogs. They started, the show started at 8 o'clock this morning. Now it's 10 o'clock at night. and uh, There's a lot of waiting around at the dog show when it goes um, this long. But they sleep, you know, they rest. They're not up and about the whole time. Everybody finally making entry. Up on the big screen, too. Mr. Biven had his first purebred dog when he was 12, a Pomeranian. He was the first judge to judge, he f judged his first, first match show at age 12. He was approved to judge in addition to the sporting breeds, all the working breeds, all the terrier breeds, toy breeds, non-sporting breeds. That level of experience, you can look over a lot. And the man from Fort Worth, Texas, getting his initial peek at the contestants.
Thank you. Take them up, please. Bring them up. So we start with the setters tonight. Right Our first dog <coughs> is going to be the Irish setter. Irish setter. Irish Setter is one of the largest of the sporting breeds. They are known for their glossy long red oh. coat and graceful movement. Irish Setters are likable dogs, friendly, loving, loyal, and protective. They are the slimmest of the Setters. Their heads are longer, and their red coat is straighter than either the Gordon or the English Setter. This is Irish Setter number 16. <coughs> so this is Adele. Three quarters, She's yeah. the number one Irish setter, both in breed and group. What do setters do? What are their main function? Well, there, we're going to see four setters tonight. They were all developed on the British Isles. Uh, and they're, they point birds. I mean, they smell and, and, and point birds, upland birds. Right around the, the Irish is the most popular of the four. Uh, it's been around a long time. First registered by AKC in 1878. English Setter. The English Setter, like all Setters, works with a hunter to find game, point, and then quickly set near the game. English Setters are elegant, substantial, and symmetrical in build. They are flat-coated with feathering of good length. English Setters are active, rugged dogs, but also sweet and mild-mannered. This is English Setter number oh, 11. Right and this is London, aptly named for an English Setter. <laughs> About three quarters. Multiple specialty winner, two time best of breed winner at the AKC Yukonuba National Championship. I should mention this dog also has a, a beginning novice title in obedience, a rally novice title, and three agility right. titles. We Good. love it when our show dogs also compete in AKC's companion events. About half the dogs in this group tonight, I noticed, have other titles other than show titles. It's awesome. How old is he? Thanks. Gordon Setter. Gordon Setters are the largest and heaviest of the setters. Gordons are muscular, big boned, and sturdy. <coughs> they are highly intelligent, quick to train, and have good memories. Today's Gordons have lustrous black feathery coats. Their markings are a deep mahogany color. This is Gordon Setter, number 21. Toby, who is a lover of ducks and duck toys. Right now he's <laughs> loving life with his handler, Madeline Peterson. This is the heaviest boned setter of the four. It is, yes. This dog d was developed in Scotland in the, in the late part of the 18th century. Uh, I, I find it interesting, uh, Daniel Webster is given credit for importing one of the first Gordon Setters to the United States. Thank you. Right around, please. Great view from the sky cam overhead. Toby going back to his spot. Oh. Oh. Irish Red and White Setter. The Irish Red and White Setter is a distinct breed, not just a different colored version of the Irish Setter. Bred primarily for the field, they should be strong, powerful, and athletic, with a keen and intelligent attitude. Known in Ireland since the 17th century, the Red and White is thought to be the older of the two Irish Setters. However, it was nearly extinct by the end of the 19th century. During the 1920s, efforts were made to revive the Irish Red and White Setter, and by the 1940s, the breed began to reemerge in Ireland. This is Irish Red and White Setter, number five. And this one named Sean, and following that tradition, born and bred in Ireland. This is the only best in show winning Irish Red and White Setter in the breed. Hmm. Interesting. Number Sorry. one, three years in a row. <coughs> and this one has a Junior Hunter title after his name. Which is a field F event. A field title, yes. Yep. Pointer. Oh. Pointers oh. get their name from the way they stand Seven. and point game. Every inch of gun dog. Pointers are full of energy. They combine speed and endurance and have the ability to concentrate on their job. 
Their short hair makes them neat and clean around the house. This is pointer number five. Can a job description get any clearer? Pointer. <laughs> mm -hmm. Arthur here you may have heard the interplay between the judge and Sierra Ward the handler asking how old he was. I believe she said seven. Okay. What? Arthur has three best in shows, two this year. He's the top ranked grand champion in the history of the breed. The, this, this breed is one of the oldest working pointing breeds developed in England, and it is a very powerful and exciting dog to watch hunt in the field. <coughs> German short-haired pointer. German short-haired pointers are versatile, all-purpose hunting dogs. They are well-balanced, symmetrical animals, possessing a look of intelligence and animation. Their conformation indicates power, endurance, and agility. German short-haired pointers are loyal, intelligent, and wonderful with children. This is German short-haired pointer number seven. And Gina, this is CJ, one of the dogs you talked about at the top of the telecast to keep an eye on. Here he is. Uh, obviously, this dog was developed in Germany, and most of the continental breeds are very versatile breeds meant to hunt both birds and uh, fur animals, and, and the short hair fits that pill. It is the most popular of the pointing breeds in the United States. CJ's housemate is Ramona, a whippet. <laughs> that must be an active household. <laughs> For sure. German wire-haired pointer. Getting there. German wire-haired pointers are well-muscled, medium-sized dogs of distinctive appearance. Balanced in size and sturdily built, their most distinguishing characteristics are their facial furnishings and weather-resistant, wire-like coat. They are typically pointer in character and style. German wire-haired pointers are intelligent, energetic, and determined hunters. This is German wire-haired pointer number seven. Okay. This is I'm Truman, back, who's got some <coughs> great wins to his credit and brought out of retirement. Brought out of the retirement to compete in his national specialty and then here at the AKC Ukanuba National Championship. He has won his national championship or his national specialty twice. And Truman also is a junior hunter and uh, is a canine good citizen, which we'd good love run. to see that too. Thank good you. manners. Good manners matter. It's a great program, the AKC Canine Good Citizen Program, and yeah. it's for all dogs. All dogs. Oh. Golden Retriever. <laughs> Golden Retrievers have thick, lustrous coats that range in color from deep to light honey gold. These powerful dogs are serious about their retrieving work, but put just as much energy into play. Goldens are eager to please, making them highly trainable, but their most outstanding trait is character. They are outgoing and devoted uh, companions. This is Golden Retriever number 107. Dylan getting the once over I'm right now from Mr. Ed Embry Biven. Being shown tonight by Amy Booth, who is one of his owners. The Goldens have always been very popular in the United States. Currently, they're ranked number three in popularity, developed in Scotland in the 1860s. And I have to say, when it comes to the upper level of obedience, it's hard to beat a Golden. You are getting a lot of hear hears from the folks watching mm. around the globe. One of America's <laughs> favorite breeds. How old? Two. Weimariner. Weimariners present a picture of grace, nobility, speed, stamina, and alertness. Their silvery, silvery, silvery coat, sometimes called mouse gray, should be solid colored. Eyes range from light amber to gray to blue gray and should express their intelligence and good humor. The nose is gray and the tail is docked to six inches. This is Weimarimer number seven. Okay. 
This is Ziggy, shown by very successful professional handler, Michelle Scott. Lemranner is another all-purpose hunting dog that was developed in Germany. Uh, it's, it's the largest of our pointing breeds. And he's also a junior hunter. And a round pig. Yes. Vishala. Vishalas are medium-sized, short-coated hunting dogs of distinguished appearance. They are lightly built but powerful. The coat color is an attractive, solid golden rust. This is a dog of power and drive in the field, yet a tractable and affectionate companion in the home. This is Vishla, number 39. Whiskey is being very patient. <laughs> The Wiesla was developed in Hungary and is oftentimes referred to as the Hungarian Pointer, <laughs> another European developed all-purpose all-around hunting dog. Because they point, but they also do, they flush, <laughs> right? They, they retrieve, well, they, do, they, they do, do everything. Water work, they do, yeah. do water work, yep. Around, please, slow him down just a tad. See, so Mr. Viven asked him to slow down just a tad so he can better evaluate his confirmation. Maybe he thought it was just, sometimes in a sprint, you can't see How everything you need to see. 60, a baby. Wire-haired Bishla. The breed originated in Hungary as a hunting dog that could withstand extreme weather and rough field conditions, which is why they have a long, dense, wiry coat. They are gentle, outgoing, friendly dogs that make wonderful companions. Because of their athletic nature, wire-haired Vishlas do best Good with active Out families. Back. This is wire-haired Vishla, number eight. This is Savannah, and like a lot of dogs, she loves to play fetch, but maybe not too many like to play with their toy pig. But hey, Savannah, whatever works. So this is the second breed of the night that's new to AKC. So for the first time, we have the wire-haired Vishla competing at the national championship. Just became fully recognized July 1st mm -hmm. of this year. Yep. Flat coated retriever. Flat coated retrievers are versatile family companions and hunting retrievers with a happy and active demeanor, intelligent expression, and clean lines. They are powerful without clumliness and lively without being nervous. Their solid black or liver coat is thick and glossy and lies flat, although sometimes it may be slightly wavy. This is flat coated retriever number 24. Wait. It's all right. You're good girl. <laughs> Out in the back. <laughs> so this is Macy. What are you waiting on? The number one flat coat retriever, all systems. Top 20 in the sporting dogs, winner of the flat coated retriever national specialty this year. Mm -hmm. Also has a junior hunter junior title. Junior hunter title, yes. Good girl. Always so is that the first title in the. In the hunt test yeah. program, that is the beginning level title, yes. Macy looking to add to the award total tonight. How? <coughs> Chesapeake <coughs> Bay Retriever. <coughs> really? Chesapeake Good. Bay Retrievers are equally proficient Good. on land and in the water. They are strong swimmers, and their dense, oily double coat make them ideally she suited to working in cold water. She Chesapeake Bay Retrievers are valued for their bright and happy disposition, intelligence, quiet good sense, and affectionate, protective nature. This is Chesapeake Bay Retriever Out number back. six. And this is Rita, the first Chessie, as sometimes we call him, Chessie bitch in the history of the breed to b obtain a gold grand championship. Now, this is a breed that was developed uh, in the United States right. on the East Coast. Uh, it is the state dog of Maryland, which was the first state to ever dedicate a state dog. Go, Maryland. How old is he? Seven. Good boy. Curly-coated retriever. 
Curly-coated retrievers are one of the oldest of the retrieving breeds. They may have descended from the English Water Spaniel, Irish Water Spaniel, St. John's Newfoundland, and Poodle. Curlies are alert and self-confident with a coat that is dense mass of small, tight, distinct, crisp curls. They are smart and trainable Out and cherished as much as loyal companions at home as they are in the field. This is curly-coated retriever number 15. Curly indeed. So this is quite an accomplished dog, actually. It has a CDX title in obedience. It has a Master Hunter, which is the highest level title in a Retriever Hunt Test Program. And because they're a versatile breed, it also can enter the Spaniel Hunt Test Program, where it also has a Master Hunter title. Wow. How old is he? Labrador Retriever. Labrador Retrievers come in black, yellow, and chocolate. They are strongly built and very active with muscular hindquarters. The tail of the lab is distinctive. It is covered with thick, short hair, wide at the base and tapers to a point. It should not curl over the back. It is called an otter tail because of its rounded shape. This is Labrador Retriever number 93. America's most popular breed. Most popular breed for quite a while. At least uh, 15, maybe 20, 20 years. years yeah, 20 years. So. And, and for good reason. They have uh, not only are they great hunting dogs, but they also have great personalities, making them just great family pets. Uh, the breed originated in Newfoundland, but developed its reputation as an outstanding uh, retriever in England. One of the many crowd favorites mm. here in this sporting group. It's my son's favorite breed. It's begging me Brittany. to get a lab. <laughs> Brittany's of today owe their popularity today to their hunting ability, medium size, and alert, happy temperament. Their size makes them an ideal pet for city dwellers. Many American Brittany breeders have striven to maintain the dual concept of good-looking dogs that are excellent hunters. This is Brittany number 37. Out and back, please. This is Beckett being shown by one of his owners, Linda McCartney Roy. She's been in the breed since 1976. Started in Brittany's with a hunting dog. Now, the Brittany was developed in France in the 1850s uh, when sportsmen crossed their spaniels with hey English Rome. setters. Uh, this dog, true to its dual, uh, the dual concept, also is a junior hunter. It's number three Brittany in the country. English Springer Spaniel. English Springer Spaniels are medium-sized sporting dogs with compact bodies and dock tails. Their coat is moderately long and glossy, with feathering on legs, ears, chest, and belly. The English Springer has the typical Spaniel personality, smart, adoring, and eager to please. This is English Springer Spaniel number 20. You may have seen the junior showmanship competition earlier tonight. One of the owners, also the breeder, Dr. Okay. Aaron Kerfoot started in that junior showmanship program in the 90s. Now with Janice Hayes handling tonight, Liz here, She's one of the doctor's great finds. Named after Elizabeth Taylor. Hmm. <laughs> These are great upland flushing dogs in the field. Uh, the most popular are the Spaniels. Uh, their job is to okay. find it, flush Thank it, and fetch you. it, and they do it very <laughs> well. So just like Elizabeth Taylor, <laughs> as I say, this dog <laughs> likes filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> Got the rich, glamorous How old? taste, too. How old? How old? Oh. Irish Water Spaniel. Irish Water Spaniels are the tallest of our Spaniels. They are smart, proud, strong sporting dogs, combining great intelligence with rugged endurance. Irish Water Spaniels have sharp retrieving skills and love the water. Their tightly curled coats are oily and naturally water-resistant. 
The so-called rat tail is a striking characteristic of the breed. This is Irish Water Spaniel number 10. Alice getting some applause here. Interesting characteristics of this dog. Curly top knot on its head. No hair on its tail. It can be very clownish and fun. Thank you. Very interesting breed to, to look at. I thought. Uh, Love them. Been around a long time, perhaps back to the 8th century. First recognized in 1884. Oh. Wire-haired Pointing Griffon. The wire-haired Pointing Griffon's most distinguishing characteristic is its coat. It is usually brown and gray, of medium length and straight and wiry, never curly or wooly. The harsh texture provides protective rough cover. The breed is medium-sized with a noble square-shaped head. They have a large mustache and big bushy eyebrows. This is Wire-haired Pointing Griffon number 11. So you hear the talk about being brown and gray. So this dog's name, of course, <laughs> is Blue. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Margaret and Scott Dozier's first show dog. They started in the sport just two years ago. Wow, that's good. Yeah. This is a breed that was developed in France. Now this dog has a relatively new title, a coursing ability test title. Uh oh. We'll have to talk oh. about that. The cat. We love to the call cat. it the cat. The cat. Nova yeah. Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever. Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retrievers are medium-sized, powerful, compact, and balanced dogs. They are the smallest of the retrievers. Tollers are alert, determined, and quick, with a keen desire to work and please. The word tolling is me, a please. Middle English word meaning to lure or to decoy game. And that's exactly what the playful action of the taller accomplishes. It causes the curious waterfall to swim close to the shore in order to better observe the dog's antics. This is Nova Scotia Duck Tolling Retriever, number 25. Wrangler. Keeping us going here in the sporting group. Interesting history in this. Uh, it, was, it was developed to lure in ducks uh, to within in shotgun range. This is the number one Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever in the country. 2013 National Specialty Best of Breed winner. How old? How old? Seven. Spinoni Italiano. Spinoni Italiani are experienced hunters on any terrain and excellent retrievers as well. Muscular dogs with powerful bone. Spinoni are resistant to fatigue. Their harsh textured weather resistant coat is wiry and dense. Their coat along with their slick skin, their thick skin allows them to negotiate underbrush and endure cold water that would severely punish any dog not so naturally armored. This is Spinoni Italiani, number seven. You can always use a little Italiano <laughs> flavor. Versatile breed, developed in Northern Italy. This dog also has one of our canine good citizen titles. This is one of the wiry coated it sporting is. dogs. Yep. Wasn't that also because they go in the water as well? They go yeah. in the water and it's a little more resistant to brush, heavy cover. And it is one of the breeds that has more interesting top line or back line. Mm -hmm. It's not flat like most of the no. sporting dogs. Uh -oh. So let's have a rise there over the loin. Welsh Springer Spaniel. Welsh Springer Spaniels are attractive dogs of hearty size, <laughs> exhibiting substance without coarseness. They are compact, not leggy, obviously built for hard work and endurance. Welshies are distinguished by their beautiful coats, which are always red and white. No, this is Welsh not. Springer Spaniel <laughs> number seven. And this is the number two Welsh all-breed competition here in 2014. Out and back, too. This breed in the field is pretty easy going, very affectionate breed. It hunts at a, at a brisk trot, a very methodical hunter. He is the number two Welsh 
in 2014. This is uh, Willem. Field Spaniel. The Field Spaniel has sturdy legs and big feet with soft hair between the toes. Their dense glossy coat, which is wavy and feathery, is usually black or liver, but can also be golden liver or roan and have tan markings. The tail is docked to balance the overall appearance. This is Field Spaniel number five. Well, you know an owner is in love with a dog when she says, this is my once in a lifetime dog. Well, <laughs> well, this is Gideon, Out and he is course. the number two sporting dog. He is also the top ten all-breed dog in the country. Wow. He's won 23 best in shows, 92 group firsts. He is the top field spaniel in the history of the breed. Wow. So that's what that's she means great. is a once-in-a-lifetime dog. Yeah, that's true. Very good. One is national specialty this year. And he's the first black field around, spaniel please. to win a best in show. A black beauty indeed. English Cocker Spaniel. English Cocker Spaniels are very active, merry, and compactly built sporting dogs. They are alive with energy and are powerful and ready to dive into dense brush to flush out and retrieve game. English Cockers are above all dogs of balance. Whether standing or moving, they have a very active dock tail. This is English Cocker Spaniel number 31. Okay. This is Gordon. 31 group firsts, best in show, best in specialty show winner. I attended the Cocker National Field Trial this fall, and I can tell you these dogs are the energizer bunny <laughs> of spaniels. Boy, they go. Uh, a lot of their hunting is done in the woods because they were developed to be woodcock hunting dogs. They're very merry, very sweet-tempered dogs. They really are. Excellent family dogs always if you're looking happy. for a smaller spaniel yep always happy yep. this one may be really happy if it ends up first here in the sporting group <laughs> absolutely how old american how water old? spaniel american water spaniels are one of the few breeds developed in the united states <coughs> this family loving sporting dog has a long history as a skillful companion of all hunters they can easily retrieve a down quail from a thicket as they can swim to bring in a duck. They are adaptable to both city and country living, but their life is not complete without sometimes Good splashing boy. in Out the water. Back, this is American Water Spaniel number nine. Doesn't need a beach towel or lotion. It's ready for the water at any <laughs> time. Mm -hmm. Looks like it too. So this dog has won best in show at its national specialty along with a senior hunter spaniel and junior hunter retriever title. Right, uh, true to their kind of right. dual purpose is they can enter both the retriever hunt test and the spaniel hunt test. This is the state dog of Wisconsin. Another rare breed that people don't consider but make wonderful oh. pets. Mm -hmm. Clummer Spaniel. <laughs> Clummer Spaniels are it's one of the buddy. oldest Spaniels. <laughs> first developed in France, they are believed to be a mixture of the Basset Hound and Alpine Spaniel. Their shape is somewhat like that of a Basset Hound, but they are bigger and have a longer coat. The coat is mostly white with lemon or orange spots or freckles. The Clummer Spaniel okay. was one of the first 10 breeds recognized by the AKC. This is Clummer Spaniel number 23. And this is Eli shaking himself out, getting ready to take a little trot. Won the national specialty in 2012. Is the was the number two clumber spaniel both in 12 and 13. Has won multiple best in shows. The breed's uh, long, low, uh, heavy kind Correct. of dog is particularly adapt to uh, working heavy cover when he hunts. It's a, one of the more substantial sporting dogs. Yep, for right? spaniels, very yep. substantial.
They're very sweet tempered dogs. Boykin Spaniel. Oh. The Boykin Spaniel is a medium sized all around hunting dog with a cheerful, energetic personality. The breed was developed in South Carolina in the early 1900s by Mr. L. Whitaker Boykin. Originally used to hunt wild turkeys, Boykins now typically work with ducks and other waterfowl. Possessing a rich chocolate brown coat and charm to okay. spare, the breed thrives on human companionship. This is Boykin Spaniel number 15. Boy, that is an appropriate description of that rich chocolate coat there for bones. It's the number one Boykin Spaniel all systems, the only group winning Boykin in breed history. Another breed that's been around for a long time, but new to the American Kennel Club relatively. I have hunted with Boykins, and I can say they are excellent, high energy, upland flushing dog. Really a joy to and hunt around. with. Thank you. And appropriately, they're the state dog of South Carolina, which is where they were developed. How? Black Cocker Spaniel, Ascob Cocker Spaniel, and Party Color Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniels are judged in separate varieties by their colors, black, Ascob, or any solid color other than black and party color. The smallest of the sporting dogs, they are sturdy, speedy, and merry. Their expression should be intelligent, alert, and soft. The tail is docked, and their step is sporty. Here is the black number 27. That is Allen, and he is the number one Cocker All Systems in 2014. He's in the top 20 of all breeds. <laughs> Look at him move. The Cockers are the smallest of the Spaniel breeds. Again, uh, primarily developed for hunting in woods for woodcock. Mm. Mm. He's making little noise, <coughs> Mr. Riven, to try to see his expression. <laughs> so cute. Here is the Ascot number no. 15. So how much is a hunting dog's uh, ability to hunt instinctual versus training in field trial work? I'd say a lot of the dog's drive. You know, if he's really driven to be a hunter, that is, that is instinct. Mm -hmm. The refinements, how well he retrieves, that's, that's training. Thank you. And this is Ike, a best in specialty show group winner. And this is our third canine good citizen in the sporting group tonight. All dogs should take the AKC's canine good citizen test. It's such a great basic 10 step test that teaches and or stresses good manners in the home and out in the streets. It's That's right. Around. It's just a foundation activity for anything you do with a dog. Yep. And here is the party color number five. Ali is the name. One best of variety at AKC Yukonuba show in 2013. He says he loves to show, and he says he smiles when he shows. Well, let's see if we can <laughs> see that smile. <laughs> Jessica Brickett, the handler, smiling. <laughs> I don't know. I want to see him smile. <laughs> Come on, Ali. <laughs> Flash that grin. Yeah. Camera's on. Up next. Oh, I can see it. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> Some some dogs they just love to show. Yep. <coughs> and around. Thank you. Thank you. 
see if Ali and his party are Sussex silent here Spaniel. a little bit. The Sussex Hello. Spaniel was Six also seven. one of the first 10 breeds registered by the AKC, but now is one of the rarest of the Spaniels. The Sussex presents a long, low, rectangular, and rather massive appearance, coupled with free movement and nice tail action. The rich golden liver color is unique to the breed. This is Sussex Spaniel number 11. Out and back. Monarch is the last year in the sporting group, the Sussex Spaniel. Golden liver is the only acceptable color for this breed. Uh, it's, it's short, as you can see, uh, long-bodied, uh, pretty good for working in heavy cover. They'll just plow right through it, right? <laughs> they do. Yeah, absolutely. It's always amazing to me. Well, everybody spreading around, and our judge, Mr. Ed Embry Biven, ready to make his cut. Walking the line. See the Irish, please. Two Germans. There's the lab. He right, pulled the German wire hair. He pulled both the German short hair and the German wire yeah. hair. The field spinner. And the black cocker. Push him back, please. One at a time around, please. Back uh, to the end. Leads on. My favorite part. Just go around and try to earn it right here. <laughs> <laughs> so while the judge may have some idea of who he wants, I truly believe that when they do the go around, that last great movement can win it all. Here comes the golden retriever. Dylan with a, another run by. A flat coat retriever. America's favorite breed, the lab. Looking pretty happy. Mm-hmm. Here we have the field spaniel. And the black cocker spaniel. He's made up his mind. Mm -hmm. One last look. One last look. Great look at his vantage point and then the vantage point. Now Judge Biven will announce fourth through first place. We begin with fourth place. Fourth place this evening is the Irish Setter. Adele gets fourth. Thank you. Right here. Third place, the Labrador Retriever. He was Thank happy you. for me. <laughs> Second place, it's the American Cocker. Thank you. Oh, sorry. And this evening, first place in the sporting group is the Field Spaniel. 
That field spaniel. Wow. There we have the number one all time winning field spaniel has gotten a spot in Best in Show. So the field spaniel able to deliver here in this sporting group to close out the night. Gideon takes the title here in sporting and moving on to the Best in Show tomorrow night. Mr. Biven has chosen group first, the Field Spaniel, second, the American Cocker Spaniel Black, third, the Labrador Retriever, fourth, Irish Setter. So Gideon, the Field Spaniel, joins the best in show grouping for tomorrow night. Certainly the best in this sporting group. Will Gideon have what it takes to win it all tomorrow? We'll find out then. Back to wrap up the night's proceedings here from Orlando in a moment. Stay with us. It's the look on your face and your pining embrace that say we'll be together again unlike most superstars they're modest and very few of them have shoe commercials but when it comes to competitive fire and intensity the purebred dog cannot be equaled. Come watch them compete at an American Kennel Club event before they become free agents. Riding the trails of the Alpine timber takes the strength to challenge mountains. Yukonuba's specially formulated nutrition with animal-based protein helps build strong, lean muscles so the broken trails fall fast beneath Roxy's feet. Yukonuba, fuel awesome. That's my friend, Cole. And that's me, Ilya. Ever since we got teamed up by Canine Companions for Independence, people don't think of Cole as the kid in the wheelchair anymore. Now he's the kid with a really cool dog. Personally, I think Cole's pretty cool too. To find out how you can help bring people like Cole together with dogs like me, visit cci.org or call 1-800-572-BARK. What a fun night of competition and activity here at the 2014 AKC Yukonuba National Championship. Three of the seven spots, or excuse me, four of the seven spots for best in show are decided tonight with the four group winners. The latest, the sporting group, and Lindsay McCormick standing by with our winner. Lindsay? We had quite the group of athletes out there. Tomorrow night, how excited are you for this? It's unbelievable. I'm just beyond excited. Did your dog do any performance work? Because I was impressed. Uh, no, not currently. Um, he'll be starting next year doing some performance work, but he really is nonstop. <laughs> Compare your dog to a professional athlete. Um, since he's pretty much nonstop, Beth athlete, Bo Jackson. Ooh, I like that answer. <laughs> and then, what is, do you have a game plan for going into tomorrow evening? Just have fun and um, just do what we've been doing all year. Well, I'm excited to see how you guys will do tomorrow as well as the rest of our winners, and I'm sure Gina and Jason are as well. We are, Lindsay. Thank you very much. Thanks for all your hard work tonight, and congrats to Elizabeth Jordan Nelson there handling Gideon, the field spaniel and the champion here in this sporting group tonight. And once again, a rundown of the results in sporting, the Field Spaniel, the Black Cocker Spaniel, the Labrador Retriever, and the Irish Setter. Gina, what a night. It's been an awesome start to the national championship. We have four out of seven best in show contestants, and I can't wait for tomorrow. Some other great things, the Breeders' Stakes, the Junior Showmanship, the National 
owner handler series, champions crowned, and all of those disciplines tonight. We hope you enjoyed it wherever you are watching, whether it was Orlando or other parts of the globe. Don't forget to rejoin us tomorrow night for the rest of the competition starting at 6 Eastern for Lindsay, Gina, and our entire crew here in Orlando. This is Jason. We'll see you tomorrow night.